Rosemary, just to, just so you know, Rosemary, when you want to talk, we're going to take a minute and switch audio around a little bit, but we're really excited you can join, so thanks for calling in. Okay, calling the meeting to order at 6.31. Donna, just for note, Donna is going to listen afterward and take minutes, and Duncan won't be here and Mark will be late. Um, consider additions or adjustments to the agenda. Anyone have adjustments or additions? Okay. The right room, I'm assuming. If you're looking for a slack board meeting? Yeah. You're on. Hello. Um, review invoices and orders. We haven't gone through them all yet, but Evan, here you go. I'll do it after. Um, consider approving minutes for September 11th and September 13th. So, yep, those are in the packet stapled. I don't think moving forward we need the minutes in the packet per se. Uh, just one more paper. It's weird because I only got all its paper. Uh, we don't even need them printed at all because we'll work through them when yeah, we just send them. This is new. So, present for you? Yeah. Approving minutes. Everyone's read them, I assume. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for September 11th and September 13th. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, select board issues and concerns. Anyone have issues or concerns? Yeah, I'll just uh, take this time to address the, uh, the sunflower situation. It has uh, boiled over to Front Porch Forum, and it's, I think, the fourth consecutive day of people posting about it. Um, and I think going down uh, kind of a very speculative route. So I think for the interest of transparency, it is uh, wise for us to just air publicly what we know. Um, so I'm going to read into the record a voicemail from um, Detective Kevin Leho at the Sheriff's Department. Uh, I'm going to omit most names, um, but... If you're going to omit names, you should omit all names or say all names, one of the two. To you. Okay. Um, I'll say all the names, then. Hey Kyle, it's Kevin over at the Sheriff's Department. So I stopped by last week, but you weren't home, so I figured I'd leave you a message. I did speak to the gentleman who cut down the sunflowers, and I don't have my notes in front of me, but I believe his name is Phil, and he is the caretaker of the property for his aunt and uncle, and by all accounts, doesn't seem like it was malicious at all. He thought he left plenty of them. He seemed to have an issue with them getting taller and being a bit of a hindrance, but he spoke with a Ken Taranjo. Does that name sound familiar to you? who said it was fine for him to cut them down, and then he said that Ken apparently had spoken to someone on the town crew to verify that it was all okay. This could all be huff and puff, but at the end of the day, he, Phil, had been told not to do it again, and if he has problems with the flowers on the street, to contact someone at the town office and speak to someone directly. 
he asked if he can still mow that area, and I told him no, don't do anything more with that area. That's all I have for you. Let me know if you have any questions, but it doesn't seem like malicious intent. It just seems like he, Phil, just did it. So I just wanted to read that to the record, and also to clarify um, that as far as I'm aware, no town official um, and nobody on the town crew was consulted about this. Um, I think that's a pretty important discrepancy. And I, I know we have confirmed this with Jason. Um, That's all the information that we have. So is this like a police report, or is this public record? Uh, the Sheriff's Department did an investigation, and they left a voicemail, which was forwarded on to me. There you go. OK. Any other issues or concerns? Um, I um, was in the office the other day, and a man called the um, works on tower clocks in New England. Mm -hmm. And he's coming to Vermont at the beginning of October, and he said he'd come and take a look at our clocks um, for free. Mm -hmm. And then if we were so inclined, um, I'm hoping that I can pry him for some advice and information. Um, but I don't see, um, I just wanted to bring that up to the select board and get your okay seeing how it's not going to cost us anything. This is what he, he, he does tower clocks throughout New England. He services them once a year for $500. But this is not in any way an obligation to do that. He would just come, look at what we have. Maybe he could um, give me some information on <coughs> possible fixes. And I don't know. And you're going to be with him? Yes, I would be with him. I have a key to the. Um, I used to have a key. I don't know if the library changed it to um, the clock at the Masonic Temple. I, is the clock in the town hall, clerk's office, town hall, working? Does anybody know? Yeah, no. Last time I looked, within the last yep. month or so. <laughs> Somebody from Hyde Park? It's about oh, like Ron, Ron pays attention to everything. <laughs> Ron does everything. Here, take, take yeah, your my watch. I don't pay any attention to that, but I, the other one I took care of for 20 years, and it, you know, it, it, what had happened was the um, columns had shifted enough that the weight, it's, which is literally a box of rocks about the size of that garbage can, mm -hmm. won't descend. Um, but Anyways, it would be interesting to have him come and look at it and pick his brain. So if that's if that's the will of the select board, I will um, go forward with that. I'm cool with a free evaluation. Yeah, I'm good with it if you're there. Free yeah. is your price. I knew. That's how I roll. <laughs> um, I do have a question about the orders, Jason. What did we have? What would, what did we purchase data for? Stay for yeah. Like a bigger quantity of it, or just a small? Twenty-nine thousand. It was stay mat and well, it was uh, inch and a quarter and three quarter inch stay mat, and that was the flood repairs for the flood. Road okay. East and Lundwin. Cool. Just want to make sure it's under flood in that case. Okay. Sounds good. Any other issues or concerns? Leaves are turning. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's gonna be peak foliage. It's just barely turning. Okay. Uh, next up, plan purchases. We have a set of six winter tires for the salt truck on the list. Are we allowed to make a comment on the sunflower situation? Sure. Because that's why I'm here. Okay. Um, how is the town? What is, sorry, what is your name? Vanessa Taranjo. Okay. What? I was related to Kent Taranjo. I was married to the family. So I know how he operates. So I just need to say that out loud. I do believe it was done with malicious intent. But what I want to know going forward is how are we going to address this issue when this was out of his um, jurisdiction? He did not have the right to say, oh, go ahead, let's have it mowed down. How are we going to address this going forward? If you'd like to make a comment, that is fine. Um, I'm not allowed to ask questions. You can ask questions. I mean, I don't have an answer for telling somebody how to behave or not. Um, 
but I just hope we can work together. Of, that's not We're not going to have a dialogue about it. If you'd like to make a comment, I would love to hear it. Yes. Okay. So I would like to see something go forward about this because, you know, this is taxpayer money. You know, this is the beautification committee is what we pay for. And we have a town official or village trustee, I'm not quite sure, you know, how you want to talk about this, has gone out of his jurisdiction and done something that he is not supposed to do. Well, just to be clear, there's a difference between a town um, represent, representative and a village representative. Right, I, I get that. Yeah. But like, he's done something that he's not supposed to do, and we're just going to kind of like let it go, brush it under the rug. Like. Uh, I have talked to Ken a little bit about the whole situation, mm -hmm. so no, I'm not brushing anything under the rug, but there's nothing we can do about it. And as far as I can see, there isn't any evidence of ill intent. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Right, but. I don't, we're not gonna discuss it. So that's my answer. I'm sorry if you don't like me. No, answer. that's fine. That's that's fine. It's just frustrating to see. Um, I feel like the beautification committee is constantly targeted by um, Ken Taranjo and a couple of other people on the trustees. So that's my personal opinion. Yeah. And it's okay. just frustrating to see this happen. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I understand, and I also understand what it means to be a volunteer. So, and I understand being a volunteer not feeling like you're um, valued as a volunteer. So I understand all of those aspects of this. If we are very specific about the incident at hand, I don't think the property owner had any ill intent from what I can see and I don't see evidence of anything else. And also, just to further that, like, the town didn't take the step of notifying the property owner in advance, and I think that's something we need to learn from. So I'm a... I'm, a, um, I'm sorry, what is your name? My name is John Keith. I am a volunteer John. with the okay. Education Committee. And uh, we've done a lot of projects over the past couple of years, but we didn't have to go in and knock on everybody's doors for permission to just let this to let board know what we're doing are we going to have to go now to all the trustees and all the select board and all this to make sure that our projects don't get well don't i get think destroyed? i think that historically actually when it involves village uh responsibility kyle you have gone to the trustees on a number of occasions on behalf of beautification uh but also i'll i would just say that I think in this case it's a little bit different because the property owners maintain that strip. So if the property owners maintain that strip, we should just be proactive in communication, that's all. So that's the only owner that owns that strip? I thought it was the... That's the only property that has sunflowers in front of it this year, is my understanding, other than the Tetros, who were part of the project. I thought the town was responsible for the strip, not the homeowner. There is conflicting information around who is responsible for maintaining, but it's but that from what I fair to us. Oh, at, yeah. At the meeting, I I had voice. It would be nice because people maintain that area. Of, that's not a right of way. It's owned property by the town, and there is some conflicting stories for sure. Um. But I had said it would be nice to check with the people that have maintained these strips for the last 30 or 40 years just to make sure. I don't know if that took place, uh, but maybe if it had, the property owner would have already known. Um, at the end of the day, the person that's adjacent wanted to do some maintenance and asked a question. There was no ill intent that maintenance, however, it was done. And maybe we could learn from it and grow. But. Huh? Why, why you're totally fine, or seemingly totally fine, with having Ken give the go-ahead to this property owner that he can maintain it, and then be fine with Ken saying that he got it verified by a town crew official when that was a complete lie. Mm -hmm. Why is that okay, and why is it then the 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 deflection in the blame coming on to the beautification committee when I look at meeting minutes and there is nowhere that it says you need to go ask that landowner. And that's why you said that it's clearly stated, stated in the minutes. And do you want me to go on public record and say that you didn't do what you were told to do? 
And when I point that out, then you just ghost me for three days and don't reply. So these are unanswered questions that are not okay with me. I don't think it's okay with the committee. I don't think it's okay with tax owner, you know, payers. And is really looking like somebody who went, a, made a, a, an abuse of power is getting shielded and protected. Mm -hmm. And how do we know going forward, because our hope is to go all the way down to Main Street, that this isn't going to happen again. So that's what, this is, this is the frustration, this is the unanswered question, this is the dismissive feeling that we're having right now by the select board. The problem is we can't fix the wrong that happened. That's the problem. You can problem. keep accountability though, and you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Doug? My, my understanding in, from what was read is that the bill had done address the concern that you had about uh, being advised by talking to someone who, who had represented they had authority to do that. But we don't even know what he represented. I wish that not only do we, I wish that you know, the discussions, uh, that Ken was here to say this is what happened because there's a whole area that I don't know what, what really occurred and uh, it might change how, how I see it, but right now, I, you know, if we were dealing with, you know, it's, it's not the level of a South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but right now we're asking, without knowing truth, to reconcile with on, on that level. I agree with regard to the person that did the cutting. You know. uh, otherwise, I think that uh, people feel the unknown is, is a problem, and, and I know, you know, having been in, on the select board for a long time, I have an idea of the relations between it, between it and the village, and we need to get along, but I, I don't think you can just let this go without letting the people know it might, uh, it, that, that's all I have to say, and I, 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 so you've addressed it, but we don't know what the explanation was. Understood. Yeah, and to your point, we don't have all sides to hear that explanation. So, right. mm -hmm. there, you know, very fair-minded person like David Williams, who is as moderate and, and as consultative as you can find, said, you know, please come forward. Tell us, tell us what happened. We don't know what you know, what happened on, on that next level. Mm -hmm. That's true. Do you think it would be um, smart to um, publish a link to the um, police report? Would that clarify for some people? I don't know that there was a police report. There was just a voicemail <laughs> left on an uh, individual's uh, so there cell phone was... that was then forwarded on to me. So Okay, so maybe we should look and see if there, they actually did an incident report, in which case that would be public record, in which case that could be shared. And I, I don't want to belabor this point any, you know, too long, but I, I do think it's important just for the sake of all of our committees that they know that their work is going to be valued and is not going to be, you know, affected in any way by whether it's on purpose or whether it's on accident. Uh, that's something that we need to be able to say to all of our committees. I agree. I, I agree, and I do support committees, generally speaking. And I mean, I think anyone in this room who ha knows me has heard me say on multiple occasions, we need to support our volunteers. And I do believe that. I also believe what's done is done. And we're, if I thought that we could resolve this in a civil way, then I would invite all parties for mediation. I don't believe that's that what's going to happen. So I think that we should learn a lesson, contact property owners, be proactive in the future. If there are plans to do this before, again, then we need to be proactive. The town needs to talk, take responsibility. The other thing we need to fully understand is who is actually responsible for those strips. Because I have heard from multiple people, Duncan being one of them, actually I talked to him pretty extensively about it, and he said the village is responsible for mowing those strips. I've heard the town is responsible. I have heard we hire for mowing the, mowing the strips, and I'm pretty confident that the contract that I saw with Robert and Sons didn't include those strips. 
So there's a lot of ambiguity out there. And with that ambiguity, I'm not sure we can shake out all the facts right now. Um, so there's a lot of angles to this. Well, again, on, on the, the level of the advice that this was okay, it would be nice to know that the ambiguity was, you know, was, was relied on or, or, or whatever. You know? I agree. We need to clarify it, but we need to understand first what the reality of the situation is before we can clarify that responsibility. Well, my 50 years as an attorney and being on this leads me to believe that, uh, that uh, when we're interested in having a bike path down there, we can well better know as a community. You know, that's true. That, that is yep. That's going on. yep, that is true. Agreed. We need to move on. We have a lot on the agenda. So we're going to move to plan purchases. I have that out. Hires. <clears throat> Motion to approve expense of $1,350 for snow tires for the salt truck. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Abatement scheduling. Rosemary, we are going. Rosemary, we are going to. Um, How many put abatement you on requests are there? Speaker. So if you can go off mute, Rosemary. Once you go off mute, we'll turn this. There you go. Okay. Hold on one second. Can you hear me? Uh, in five seconds, you'll be able to talk. But she can't hear us, correct? Right now, right? No. Okay. <coughs> Your speaker's on. Is this something with a college setup? Or... I think this is about scheduling the baby. No, I understand that. Why we, oh, why we don't have good It's tech, because, technology. because there's no speaker. There's no speaker hooked to their equipment. So we have to use the speaker on Ben's laptop. Okay. But if she uses the speaker, then for a second? Rosemary, do you have yes. suggestions for the abatement? Hearing. I think we need to hold a organizational meeting before we have the actual hearings. We can schedule that. Uh, do you have suggestions for scheduling? Do you want us to take the lead on scheduling? How do you want to approach that? One second, let me just turn you back on speaker. Tim, can you take us off for one second? Tim, we're just calling. How do you want to handle the scheduling? Why don't you um, make a schedule up for the organizational meeting? Then we can set meetings up for the actual hearings. I think we have we have several of them. Okay. How long does it okay, thanks. Okay. The other thing, the other questions are: Do you have anything to say about the financial reports or the ten cents on the grand list? Ten cents on the grand list. I do. Would like permission for the board to approve that expenditure before I make it. Okay, Tim. Okay. Um, board, any questions for Rosemary or thoughts on the grand list? On the ten cents on the grand list. Um. Do what? First day of November. How quickly, if abatements are granted by the Board of Abatement, will they take effect? Or is that, I guess, is that the answer? abating it's value or taxes? It's um, the value. Could be both. Could because be. If, it, if it's abating the value, that will lower the 10 cents on the grand list payment. And so that's what the 
10 less than a 10 cents on a grand list, you just have to assume it's as of April 1st. Um, the board of abatement is uh, will, will take effect, and there's, there's a wide range of options. The board has full flexibility to abate, say, two months when the house was uninhabitable. Floods are different. Normally, it's considered for like fire. There's certain statutory reasons. And then if, of a total loss, you take it off for the entire year. But where there's an opportunity to maybe abate a portion of taxes because of a timeline where they couldn't inhabit where it was uninhabitable, where then they were able to re reuse that structure. So I think it's going to be interesting how that board of abatement goes through, but it's going to be a change of value or a change of time for which there was no value. And so that's that's going to have to come out from that board of abatement, which is the lister or the assessor or civil board of uh, civil authority. So do we want to have the organizational meeting the week of before next Monday's meeting? <clears throat> or meeting next Monday? Mm -hmm. If I mean, if I'm understanding Evan correctly, you're saying we could get all the abatement hearings done before we do the 10 cents on the grand list? I mean, no, Thomas made a good point. That says of April 1st. OK. But that's what um, you budgeted so for? We, well, that, yeah, yeah, that is what you budgeted for. Have they, has the village provided their Offers on River Road East in writing yet? That was a request out of our joint meeting two weeks ago, I believe. Let's ask if Rosemary. Rosemary, have you seen that at all? They're all the same. I didn't understand what Eben was saying. We had a joint. Okay, Tim. We had a joint meeting. Okay, go ahead. We had a joint meeting with the village uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> half ago um, and we requested that they provide in writing their offer for River Road East uh, I would assume that would go to our chair and or Tom but maybe it went to you do you know about that I have not seen that I'm oh, sorry 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 Rosemary you weren't can you say that again Is it safe to say you haven't seen that? Yes, I have not seen that. Okay. Um, how do I handle the time? Uh, can we just time? take it up Monday for meeting on week? Is that okay if we take it up Monday, Rosemary? Yes. Okay. Um, and would before next select board meeting? at like 5.30 on Monday work for you for an organizational meeting? For the Board of Abatement? Yep. Yeah, for the Board of Abatement. That's kind of short notice for them. Um, okay, we we'll meet again on the 16th. Now it's time to ask. So 5.30 on the 16th. That sounds good. So would that work for all of you? Yep. Sure. It seems a long time away from there. OK. And anything else that you have, Rosemary? I think the financial stuff we can discuss next week. OK. Uh, one question that Mark had, um, no, that's... Yeah, I, Rosemary, I didn't see um, uh, in the cash accounts the money you invested at, at what was it, Community National, the a high yield savings account? Yeah, that's in Fund 60, I believe. One of the last sheets. Oh, you don't have a balance sheet there. That's just the uh, budget status report. Okay. I will get that to you next week. Okay. I'm just, yeah. yeah. I thought it would have been in the cash accounts. Not a problem. Thank you, Rosemary. Rosemary, okay. do you know how we ended the year? I think we're in good shape. Because we estimated 177000 in the red. And we're, I think, 30 some odd thousand in the black. In the black. 
It's not very good. That's good. Don't, okay. we, don't we usually run okay. over 100,000 in surplus? Yeah, I know, but we, at least we have a surplus. Yeah, we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. What? 150 to 30. This is last fiscal uh, year. Thank you, Rosemary. There was no flood last year. Never happy that. Okay, so 10 cents the list next time. So we're going to bump that one out, Tom. 10 cents? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, Mike didn't hear. Rosemary, if you think of anything else, you can just throw it in the chat. And I'll, I'll see it there. Ten to is going to be a select board meeting or a flood meeting? Ten to a select board. Um, okay. Highway report. Jason. All right. Well, Plot Road project is finished. That's exciting. Uh, we built a new uh, skid tank for the chloride. Uh, we're still hauling winter sand and uh, we almost completed the grant project on Ben Ober. That's cool. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. How far is that going to go? Past Woodward Road and on up? No. Uh, the project with the segments this year are going from Woodward Road. To the top of uh, Ben Ober, or the Clay Hill. Perfect. Sweet. Yeah. And then I had reached out to a couple vendors about uh, brush hog slash forestry mulcher for the Hewitt property. Uh, Duncan had asked me about it, and I, uh, Beth had talked about it a little bit. I haven't received the quotes back from the two vendors yet. They were supposed to give them to me by this afternoon, but I was just looking and I don't have them yet. So I can send them for next meeting if it's something uh, you guys choose to uh, proceed with, I guess. Would, would you enlighten me as to why everybody brush hogs in the fall after the plants have died? It seems like it's just like the wrong time. You, we should brush hog in June. Well, Why do they do it in the fall? That seems like it's environmental reasons. All the caterpillars and everything else, birds, nest, everything. Try, everybody tries to shoot to make them all happy. That's a great reason. Okay. I like the birds in my neighborhood and the caterpillars. I think the yeah. butterflies. Okay. Um, it's good for the brush hoggers. Concerning yeah. or anything else that you need? Yeah. Nothing concerning. I did meet with one vendor today about the town gravel pit and processing material. Uh, they got me some rough numbers. Uh, they're going to have the hard numbers in three days. Okay. Uh, the general consensus that came out of the meeting was uh, price to screen the product or buy the product is about the same. There is an option. Without the trucking. Without the trucking, but we would have to supply the trucking, even hauling the material out of there still. But one of the things that was presented, and I'll have more information about, is the hauling the gravel out of our pit to NATOs. And for every two loads we haul, we get a load back. And they do all the work as far as screening and crushing. How do the numbers add up there? Meaning, meaning the cost. Meaning um, the cost to them versus the cost to us. Like, is it worth it considering that as a viable option? I think it's a better option number-wise to go that way than it would be for them to come in with all their equipment and do it on site because the site's limited on space. Yeah. That was their big takeaway was that it was going to cost more because of the space and because we'd have to have trucks right there and a loader on site to help them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we'll wait to hear more about that. All right. That's all I had for my report. Thank you know. Any questions for Jason? Nope. 
Thank you. Uh, Joe's Colbert. Joe's for Colbert. Joe's Brook Collar or Fort Brook? It's on Joe Brook. Okay. I don't know how many. I got five copies here. I'll keep one. I can share. Mark and I can share. Thomas can have We're sharing kind of people. It's Fort Brook. It's Fort Brook. I don't know. Yeah. Why do they call it Joe's Brook or Fort Brook? Well, no, it's Joe Brook. Before it oh, goes into Fort Brook. Okay. Plot Road what crosses Fort Brook Road. You got it. Down Fort Brook. It's Joe Brook. What's your name? My Sorry. name is Peter Danforth. Um, so I'm uh, district manager for the Moyle County Conservation District. Good to see you all tonight. Um, yes, yeah, so we started a uh, scoping of this culvert, uh, which is on Joe Brook. Um, which is near the confluence of the Footbrook. Uh, so it's very close to the Footbrook entering into it. And uh, was uh, a part of uh, not only Lamoille County Conservation District, but I'm part of the Aquatic Organism Passage Steering Committee for Lamoille County. That includes members of the Planning Commission, uh, Town Johnson as well at the time, um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Vermont Fish and Wildlife, uh, DEC, numerous organizations, trying to rank out culverts throughout the model county that could be replaced and um, enlarged and made stronger and allow for a uh, brook trout passage as a primary reason. Um, so this particular um, brook uh, seemed to be a good habitat for trout uh, with the exception for the fact that this culvert was undersized, perched um, on one side so you have scouring and erosion on the downstream portion and upstream you have a lot of collection of debris and which isn't necessarily bad for river health but uh, it could be a flood hazard it could put out the road at some point during a flash flood there was lots of reasons we looked at this as being a good uh, culvert to replace and actually replace with a larger sort of I guess it's almost like a hybrid of a it's a it's a culvert without a bottom a natural bottom but it almost is like the size of a bridge essentially um, and it would be bank width to bank width, allowing regular flow of the water uh, and, and it creates sort of better stream stability in that sense as well. Um, so there's also a clean water project for that reason. And so um, there are a lot of reasons, and this is back in 2019 when this design was created um, by East Engineering. And at the time you'll see on the front it has the select board at the time and the town administrator and everyone had signed off on it but now that everything has changed uh, we need to sort of get the town of Johnson back on board with this um, and of course it, it doesn't require funding um, from the town of Johnson we've already received funds from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Vermont Fish and Wildlife as well as the Lake Champlain Basin Program and I just applied for some more money to bridge that budget gap with uh, a DEC block grant um, so hopefully when we receive that or if we receive that funding then we will hopefully have enough money to be able to do this the only thing we'd ask of the town is uh, to give support for it and also any kind of time that is spent by administrators or road foreman or anyone would be considered match towards the grants okay so your resources and time would be considered that and it could be added up um, for that reason so I guess what I'm here tonight for is just to to solidify that we're still in agreement that this is okay to do. Um, and if I could have the letter of support or intent to move forward with this from the town and give it to our last grantee, grantor, that um, we applied to, that would be great. Can um, you just remind us, Evan and I were the only two on the board at the time, and right. everybody else is new in their roles. Yeah. Um, can you just remind us what the commitment would be for our public works group? Uh, so yeah, so when we finally get down to brass tacks and we got to like close the road, you know, for whatever a week or so and have it rerouted, yeah, because it would have to be. Um, we would work closely with the town and our engineer and whoever we're contracting with to make sure that's done in a very clean, as clean as possible process. Um, so that would take up that would be a huge match, 
essentially. Okay. Um, yeah. And now, so we're planning, if, if all goes as planned, we already have the full design, we just need the permitting, and we have to implement. And hopefully we can implement in the next season. So 2024 would be the, what we're shooting for. If it has to be thrown into 2025, that's fine. This grants, these grants will go to that point. Um, I'm used to that. I tell everyone I work in geologic time because that's kind of like many people do when they're working in a system. Um, but I never forget, and we always try to move forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you have questions? Anyone? Is there um, specific language that you have already for the letter of support? Or? I did send some uh, suggested language. It's in the, I think it's in the back. Okay. Uh, it's just attacks. very, it's very yeah. okay. general. That's too um, large. No, I have it. Oh, yeah. I think it's the last one. And I think we have a new administrator, correct? Yeah, yeah that's Tom. Okay. Yeah. Tom, please. That's me. Too. Thought it was you. I was going to guess, but yeah. Probably all changed by the time you start. The <laughs> right? So, so this is the letter. Yeah, and it could be modified. Edited. It's very general language. Jason, do you have any questions? What's the life expectancy of the, not so much the concrete part, but the steel structure? Um, I'm probably not the best person to, ask, to answer that question, but I would say much longer than what's currently in place. Um, How long has that one been about the sheep's hole? I mean, wow. is that a problem? No, it's, no, it's I'm actually curious. a solid structure what's there now. It's just, it's like a fire hose, essentially, and it has created a little bit of a swimming hole there. Yeah. I recognize that. Yeah, I know, I grew up swimming there. Yeah. <laughs> and I have, I, years ago, I talked to the various landowners, and so far no one has said that they're having trouble with it. Um, in the right of way, that is. Um, I know there's a landowner that's like approached me about the project okay and when i you know asked me when it was going to happen because they were concerned that the swimming hole was going to go away yeah so that's the only negative thing i've heard about it but yep. the only thing i would be curious about is the cost i know it's not much going forward because it's all going to be grant but for the future obviously it's more expensive than a box culvert installation but it's better for the environment because they can travel right but that's something the town should consider is the cost of replacement versus the box cover is a lot cheaper. So this would be an arch culvert uh, and it would be uh, a natural stream bottom underneath it. Um, again, I would say yes, there would be an operation maintenance agreement with the town for sure regarding it. Um, but it's just, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a very qualitative language, but it's a very solid structure that's being proposed. Yeah, I'm not and, saying and, and, you know, and so it, it definitely probably wouldn't need any maintenance for at least 20 years, I'm thinking, you know. <clears throat> Unless there was a situation that was, uh, you know, beyond control. Flooding would be, be better for flooding, you know, because it would allow the waters to flow through it. It would prevent the undercutting or overcutting of the road. The road is an important road. We know that it is, you know, it reaches out to a lot of domiciles, right? And it's kind of like connected for emergency vehicles. So, I'm not saying it's a bad design yeah. at all. So no, yeah, no, no, if you're no, taking no. that as I'm just trying to think of like. I'm just saying cost-wise, it's something for the later on. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be For expensive. taxpayers, that it's a more expensive structure to think about replacing in life expectancy. Uh, gotcha. Is all I was saying. Can I get back to you with an engineer's quote on that? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, they can tell us what it would cost in 35 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them a list of other things we want to know what it would cost yeah, yeah. in 35 yeah, right. years. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled my team in 45 years. <laughs> no, I'm willing to move this letter as written. Okay. So you're, that's Happy your motion. motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Now I feel like I should read it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So your map does not show me where the heck, I think on Footbrook Road forever, where the heck is Joe's Brook? So it's, it's here. I see Can you read the letter? Can you read the letter first? Plot, yeah. Plot Road, Footbrook Road, right? Plot Road. This Footbrook right there, Joe Brook is right here. They meet. 
You drive too fast. This is an incoherent map. Any, okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. Aye. Uh, so no. Um, Tom will give you a copy of this. Yes, I some stuff. Okay, thank you very much All right, for coming thank you. in. Um, I'm just going to leave some of the things from our organization here. People need to come up. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, next up, we are actually going to bump number nine, which is the FEMA state buyout program, um, to the next meeting. So, just so folks know, we're skipping over that intentionally. Um, RFPs and grants, library, bid review, and award. Tom, do you want to kick us off on this one? Huh. Sure, so we held, <coughs> um, before I started, the request for proposal went out, and um, I believe it was for two weeks, and what came back was uh, two electrical bids and one for general construction. Um, the two electrical were gold uh, electrical and this strangest packet. This eight oh two electric kits. Uh, these were received and then passed on to the library trustees for review and recommendation. And I believe the trustees are here. Or the, or that. Okay. Um, welcome, welcome. I had a whole bunch of questions for you, and I think that folks did a good job in trying to answer those questions. And we're going to which contract? Uh, the okay. construction. Very specific construction. Uh, Ron gave a very detailed response. <laughs> More detailed than I wanted to read. Uh, but it was very helpful. And Ron, you were basically stating that it was going to be really important for all FEMA work that we handle, that we handle, uh, that we have um, estimates and the work chunked out by phase, meaning the immediate response to get us up and running and functional would be one set of requirements and estimates. And then um, further mitigation would be a different chunk. And then any additional work we may do beyond that would need to be considered carefully. And we may or may not be re re reimbursed for what that work, that additional work. That's my summary. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's three. three kind of ballparks that you play in with FEMA stuff. And it applies to all the built, you know, the municipal, the library, even the skate park to a certain extent. Say those three again. Up and running. I'll let Ron. Yeah, so I'll, re I'll rephrase. But there, there's three avenues or paths that people mm -hmm. can take with their facilities in a public assistance request. Mm -hmm. One is to build back to pre-flood. So back up to July fourth. Put everything back the way exactly the way it was. The middle phase is um, put it back, add some resiliency. And there's some conditions on how much of that work you can do. The third step is uh, full mitigation. It's full on mitigation. Lots of steps, lots of boxes, long, longer time, usually much more expensive type of work. Think of raising a library by 10 feet, that kind of mitigation. Mm -hmm. So you, you as trustees of the town collectively have to decide which uh, ballpark you want to play in. And the rules are a little bit different in each one. So that's where whatever the boards decide, you, you will be eligible because it's flood damage. You're not doing things that weren't caused by the flood. But those three boxes are where we have to fit all of the work. 
And if, you know, I think uh, I saw people working on the fire station today. So they could be in that first box. Let's put it back the way it was. We're going to get volunteers. We're, gonna not, we're not changing anything. We're not going to seek money for uh, resilient materials replacement. It's going to go right back in. FEMA looks at all the invoices and, and multiplies it by 0.75, which is the federal share. And the state applies another 12.5%, which is the town's um, ERAF level. So you get the 87.5, and the local share is 12.5. So that's how that first phase would work. That's the quickest, cleanest, easiest. Uh, you can have, uh, it's even easier if it's all invoiced. FEMA likes competitive bids with invoices, very quick to get reimbursement on that sort of the backside of all this. One is getting into the building and using it again. The other side is trying to get the reimbursement stuff. And, they'll, and FEMA will tell you the cleanest, easiest way in that Ballpark but number one is to get invoices, have the work done as soon as possible, submit the re close it out. We're happy, everybody's happy, everybody's back to normal. But you might have some hesitancy because of repetitive loss, and that's where the other two ballparks come into play. Which one do you do? You want to go there? Do you want to do those? Uh, on the library in particular, the RFP that went out looked pretty much put it back the way it was. The quote that came back seemed to be resilient language in there. Those are two totally different things. So I, I had a question over the weekend about what if, what, what if any uh, information came back that is purely pre-flood cost damage. And I didn't, I didn't get that from the, I couldn't get that from the quote that was provided because it wasn't clear if it was, it looked like it was mixed based re resiliency. So if there is resiliency, ballpark number two, uh, not very much longer. It's a, it's a review process that uh, the FEMA mitigation team will review, and they can approve up to 100% of your pre-flood damage. So if you had a $50,000 damage from the flood, they can approve up to $100,000 uh, to do both, do repairs and resiliency work. They can't go over 100% of your damage, but they can cap it at that. Still a quick process, but it needs that little extra review, and, and it does need that baseline amount, which is what was your damage. And the municipal building and Thomas is working on that to figure out what that is to put it back. Once those quotes come back, that's where uh, mitigation, resiliency can start. It doesn't start at all if all you do is stay in the first Ballpark. You don't even get to those discussions. You can do it, but it won't be reimbursable unless you have those extra. So steps. right now, right now, I'd like specifically focus on the library bid mm -hmm. for construction. Um, it has listed demolition, installation, sheetrock floors, um, painting and staining, wainscoting, building and shelves, desks, windows, and then the total project. Of those categories. Specifying which of those um, groupings that you talked about would fit demolition, for example, would that help with the estimate? Yeah. So all all of what you just said, the demo and the emergency protective measures that are going on now with your second uh, location, those are all eligible. The question of it. Are we going to get into that second? That, that almost sounds like it's ballpark number one. Put it back the way it was. Yeah. But if you read the proposal that came back, right at the top of that, it says, we hope to build back more resilient through this work. I see. So and just that, getting that, rid of that, that paragraph altogether yeah. would help. Well, it, it would clear up any issue of, are you going into the, are you getting off from number one? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, insulation and it says. Spray, spray foam is an upgrade. Yeah, spray foam with the idea that this will be OK during the next flood event. You know, it's implying mitigation. So, if we, okay, I'm just trying to figure out like what is the best way to get us moving, get it approved, and well, it's, yeah, forward. and I think that's that's a good question because if if the trustees and this like board, everybody agrees, we should add these little things. Whatever is in that bid that came back, the hundred hundred and something thousand, we all agree that that is what is really best for us right now, and it has minor. You won't get over that hundred percent cap on that ballpark number two. But you should, we, and we would need to go back to FEMA mitigation people to apply under 406, which is a separate program. 406 program, they have acronyms and numbers for everything. 
But if you can get approval under 406, which I've been told doesn't take that much longer, they take this information that you just got, they look at it, deem it eligible, give you the approval to proceed, and you, and you go on, knowing that you're capped at that 100% of your damage. We need to know what the damage is, though, and that's still unclear. What was the damage? What is it to put it back the way it was? And then multiply it by 100, and I, I just, I can't get there from the information I've seen so far. Right. Uh, Casey, can we just focus on library first? It is a library. Oh, you are a totally library? Yes. Okay. Well, all, yeah, any of them, but particularly library. Um, the, you said there's a third pathway, which is lots of mitigation. Clearly, that, and that is a third pathway, but this, what you see doesn't fall in that. Okay. No, Got no. It. no, it looks more like in the middle, the number Got two, it. let's call it. Okay. But I, but I haven't looked at that. So, so whoever provided the bid can confirm. Oh, the, all we did was add two things. Let's take those out. We'll reduce that bid by five thousand dollars, and then we have a actual cost of payment. Yeah. So, Is there a benefit um, to? Hold on, Tom. Let's let. Like, sorry. No, I just I. So, do you feel like we should rewrite our our bids to fit the parameters of? No, no, I think the RFP went out as a put it back the way it was. Uh -huh. The response indicated yeah. re resiliency or mitigation was in there, and I can't tell what it is or how much it is. If it's 5,000, have the bidder revise it to be this, all right, I'm going to go back to just pre-flood for your information. Then you can go to, to that 406 program, get approval to go back to what you did receive, which was with some resiliency pieces and proceed with your project. Um, if we take the if we take an action to approve with changes with a request to changes contingent on changes to the response, the bid response, so that it falls within the um, put it back the way it was pre category, yep. the pre flood category, mm -hmm. would that be sufficient? And then then Brian, who is here, who bid, could work with maybe you, Ron, to just classify those, or maybe Kelly, yeah. just yeah. to reclassify those? Yeah, I think time is, I'm feeling like time is of the essence for the, everybody on the yeah. library. So anything that we can do to meet with the FEMA mitigation people, whoever was involved with the bid, we can have those meetings and just try to check off the boxes um, would be best. You know, there's, there's no, they're very willing to meet. In other words, it's, it's not like they're, they'll come to, you know, it's not like we have to, um, have a delay to get to some answers, but we do need to meet with them to go over those boxes. Scott? Yeah, so the last time we met, we talked about the RFP. There was a minor adjustment that was made to go from your normal Romex 12-2 wiring that has a paper on the ground. And Evan, you have a term for the wiring that doesn't have a paper on it. That's a separate bid. That's a separate from bid. Lizard. Yeah, there's a there's a, electrical. an electrical RFP that went out Got and it. a construction RFP that went out. But out of curiosity, because that's not going back in the way it was, but it, it's, it's such a, good, a minor thing. It begs a good that, question. It's very minimally different. Yeah. So technically, does that mean FEMA has to go into the second bucket? or? Right. So. Any changes that are deemed to be an upgrade. So that sounds like an upgrade. The panel relocation is a big one on that. The yeah. panels are going to the second floor, getting elevated. That's yeah. automatic. Okay. Yeah, so we'd have to revisit that again. I don't know what the electrical, uh, they do have minor exemptions for s small improvements. They do have that little. So if you went to them and said, we're just changing the wire to current wiring, they may say, that's okay. We don't expect you to go back to 1920 and find some wiring from then, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. But, 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 the cost, they, but you do have to tell them because yeah, you're... Yeah, just the cost of 12 yep. too is so expensive. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the yep. added cost would be for an upgrade uh, line on that. Yeah, like upgrading and, and building a current standard maybe that opening, so that's, but the, raising the panel is, is costly and a resilient measure. Yeah. Brian, you have a question? Yeah, yeah so, so that's my bid for the library. Um, there's only really two minor changes on it. One is just changing the insulation where you go back to spray foam instead of the blown in that was just put in four months ago or something very recently. Didn't even think it over um, And then hinging the bottom or making the bottom of the bookcases. You know, so it's not a huge yep. change. It's not it, cost-wise. It's 
pretty minimal. Yep. Um, I wrote it in there because I thought it sounded good. <laughs> right. So that's where that's where I'm saying if we have these two so items. Just change the wording yeah. around and read some of that. Yeah. So we have and, and and we when when that's done, you may have a fifteen hundred dollar deduct or something. You know, I'm just. Whatever. Yes, whatever. It might be minor, but that new that new price becomes the pre-flood cost of that. Okay. Do we want to make a motion, or do we want to wait? I think we ought to move forward. Winter's coming, remember, has it? I do, too. Where? So are you going to make a motion? Well, it's coming to Southern Vermont. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to, yeah. 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 I'm going to make, what would be the appropriate motion? That we accept the bid with... Um, contingent on, on minor adjustments. Yeah, contingent on minor adjustments. <coughs> so that it's, yeah, that it's clear to us which is restoration and which is mitigation. Okay. Second. And I would discussion. like to recuse myself from voting on this matter. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. I don't know why okay. I say it to you. I should say it to the speaker so Donna can hear it. That's better. true. Um, Did you get that, Donna? Okay, good. Well, you're welcome. Next up is the electrical. Somehow I only have one sheet of that. One sheet of that. Well, let's just think you're at the bottom. It but it doesn't have the price. Using packets. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm having trouble following it. Yeah, there's no, no, Google there's no price on it. It's free. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The, uh, Where is the other one here? Okay, the price, so lump sum for materials, $10,125. Lump sum for labor, $7,000. Total, $17,125. Estimated start date, end of December or first part of January. Number of weeks to complete, four. For end of December. Any subcontractors, none. Yeah. They even gave their PO box. Is this also on the um, No, I'm looking at it electronically. Oh. Not bad. Jane shared. Uh, I didn't write the amount down. Okay. Uh, I think this one clearly falls into, I'm going to call it the 406 plan. Yeah. Uh, I would. So do you need to do any work or can we motion it contingent on on FEMA's approval and that way movements can yeah, be Yeah, well, right. I think FEMA's FEMA's four oh six review and and carry forward through that pro that, that's a process, but once that's done, then you're also so approving the work. So I have motion. Can I be a motion? Can I just ask a question about this bid? Oh, they were so excited. I know. But What's did the good? second bid start earlier? Like That's the second bid that you bid, received. Um, yeah, he missed a lot of stuff. Let's see. I don't think we need to start. I mean, oh, that they're, that they're saying that they can't start until the end of December or early January. So the other company that bid. Yeah, they said September um, 18th. Should have put last one. Yeah. But but they didn't break anything down. Yeah. We, we almost break. felt like. The other bid was not really a legitimate bid. I see. Um, because he didn't really look at all the things that needed to be done. I gotcha. Okay. So Fair enough. That yeah. was. Okay. Just thought I'd ask because yeah. that's a long way away. I don't know if I ever saw the final RFP, but they're going with lump sum payments in the bid, which is fine. I think Carl uh, specified that in the RFP, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but then we had a conversation about it and getting rid of it. But regardless. Okay, go ahead. I motion to approve the expense of $17,125 to Gould Electric Corp. Or, yeah, sure. Uh, for library electrical work contingent upon approval in the FEMA 406. 406 program. 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 Authorizing the town administrator to sign the bid and send it back upon approval from okay, FEMA reimbursement. 
We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Is this going to um, <clears throat> seem? It seems to me that you would want to um, do electrical before you'd want to insulate, which makes the library kind of chilly yeah. in December. I think that's. It's just a little bit of propane. Uh -huh. I uh, spoke with Brasso, who does our furnace work. He's coming next week to clean our duct work, and I asked them if they could wire the furnace so that it could run on our temporary power. We do have temporary power there, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping the answer to that is yes. But you won't have insulation? We have insulation from four feet up. And heat and we didn't rises. Have insulation before. You didn't have much for years. So okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. It'll just build the heat down. And <laughs> so we are getting our uh, insulation is way overrated. So. It's true. We're <laughs> getting energy assessment. Okay. Uh, okay. Is, does your question stem from wanting to pay for temporary insulation, or? I thought you and I were going to temper insulate everything in town. Everything, though, all the houses. Okay, we need to keep moving because we have a lot here. Um, Come on now. Thank you very much. And let's have a question. We Yeah, there's only a motion. Is there even a second? Oh, oh. I second. There was a second. Okay. Oh, you haven't voted. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 I, knew it. I knew it was going to pass. Uh, <laughs> it may be a <laughs> foregone conclusion, but. It's a form we should probably do. It. Annoying formality. Yeah. I would definitely poke and see if there's any possible way that they could get here sooner. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, Holt proposal for Holcomb House. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, we, haven't, we haven't seen you all in a really long time. I know. Can I say that when the Historic How Society comes, oh, these are well. I have some more memorabilia from Jameson Business. Like Mama Mia. That's a good question. Yeah. Beth would know. She might keep been in this town since electricity got here. Right? I don't know. I think it was. Okay, so proposal for the historical house from the Historical Society will increase the second floor. Mary Jean can walk us through. I can. And let's dive. Did everybody get this? Yeah, it's yeah, right. we, and we have, we have They're a little bit, yeah. Okay. I think, I mean, yeah. Not from opinions. Well. So, um, the assistant fire marshal, I had him come down, Sean Goodell, on the thing here on March 8th. And he went through and thought that the upstairs for storage, you know, and it says here, would be fine. There were a few things in here that he said he would like to see enhanced or fit, which were like the old detectors replaced because, I mean, the, well, they weren't even in place. The tenants had taken them all out, so it was like they were all out. Um, all oh, the exit signs downstairs being replaced because they don't work well. You have the, what is it? The exit signs don't work? Exit signs don't work at all. Because, well, they, they are working under utility power, but if the power fails, the batteries have failed. They will not work, and it's cheaper to buy a new fixture than it is to buy a battery to replace. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I've looked at that. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, just considering, you know, and then he said just considering that um, if we want to, we can move a security, part of the security system upstairs, but there's not going to be anything, I don't know, I don't think there was any problem with that, but we don't really need a security system upstairs. We have a camera. We have a camera, <laughs> yeah. I wish you didn't tell me that. <laughs> Where have you been? No. Well, we've we'll got your picture. I mean, you could argue that because it's a town building and it is a camera, it is supposed. It's a, it's a fake. 
Don't tell there me. There you go. Just don't tell me. <laughs> okay. It has a camera. It's a lot of heartburn for me. Okay. You have to keep that, keep don't it forever. Nothing to worry about. So all these other things, and we did have, I mean, I, I did, and then everybody else joined in. We had a, a number of people come to look at things like the floor, the electrical piece that's in here, local electric came, talked about um, placing all these different things, the exit lights, bulbs in the rooms, because we're really thinking we only want to use the first, the front three rooms for storage, possibly the kitchen. Um, what are you storing in the kitchen? Well, you, got, you haven't looked in the <laughs> we have a store. Hands. There's a lot of stuff that's stored. But, you know, it, and who knows? Way down the road, we're not even thinking about that now. We just want to get up there to store some stuff. So they didn't have any qualms about the steepness of the stairs? No. The stairs? They didn't have any qualms about that at all. Not up until... Mm -hmm. um, there were some qualms about the stairwell as it exists. Right. Okay, the rails are loose. There should be a rail on the other side. Um, there is some work to be done on the but stairs. Then, if we move up there <coughs> with any displays and open it to the public. Right, if it's public, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. That's, that mm -hmm. was, I remember that was a, not up to code. No. Right, it is it, a little up to so steep. steep too. And very steep, yeah. But they didn't have any qualms about us doing what we asked about just using it for the storage, bringing stuff upstairs and keeping it there. We put in a few things that we could do, um, like doing the floors over, giving it a coat of paint, um, some of the electric <coughs> lights have to be replaced, you know, the lamps have to be replaced. Um. Some of the lights <coughs> are hanging from the fixtures up there. Oh, I went up there. Yeah. It, it, so it's trash. No matter what you use it for, uh, whether you want to store, you know, goods up there or whether you want to use it for display, um, the lighting is, first of all, unsafe in my view. And so lighting would have to be replaced. I don't think any wiring would need to be done. The fixtures would need to be replaced. Um, and there's one ceiling up there that we don't know what is above. Um, the paper that is tacked to the ceiling is serving as wallpaper, I guess. But it just has thumbtacks holding it up there. And what's above the thumbtack paper, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But that room heated, needs, no, needs it's, attention it's for whatever use it might be used for. But you drain the pipes and stuff. Yes. Right? Well, we drain mm -hmm. the pipes. Oh, yeah. Yep. We drain the pipes. We did, no. Did you? Yeah. Oh, you shut, yeah. Yeah, the bathroom. shut it all off. The bathroom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They shut the waters of the bathroom. They didn't drain the heat system. Yeah, there's, yeah. Some, heat there's some minimal heat. Okay. So I guess the long-term plan is just storage. I think that's kind right of now it's the slug board. But it seems like we would like space. to see it. Need we need the space. The space. But it'd be cheaper to put a wing on it and go upstairs. It sort of depends upon what you're talking about for long range plans. What is long range? Um, already we're, we're suffering from with for space requirements for display. So in my mind, the short range even might be for opening something up there to add to display space that we currently use. So to say that the long range plan, uh, in my personal way, I don't, I don't think it's going to be that long before some of that space is going to be necessary mm -hmm. for display space. And that's why the you, more than just lighting than just and fire security is being proposed. Mm -hmm. And do, is there any 
idea on what that might cost to open that to the public? Ballpark is. Well, that's not the proposal right now. <coughs> well, I, I mean, we I think maybe I'm wrong because the request was to come up with a plan. I know Duncan had said potentially there could be a one bedroom up there, long range or something of that matter. I, I don't think, Evan, I'm not sure, but, and Mark knows more about it than I do as far as he has a lot of apartments and things, but that place up there is going to take a maximum. Don Blake came over and he said just the bathroom is going to be twenty five to 30000 I understand so, it. It wouldn't be cheap. It, it won't be cheap to make it ADA compliant so that it could be a viewing right. room because the elevator is going to run you 150 to 175,000, give or take. Well, um, if um, we, when we, when and if we, we do something like that, we really do need the display space. And when you see the people that come in, and I know you guys have been in there, but there's a lot more stuff to be displayed and put out. You know, historically, there's a lot. Um, I think in the long run, what we're talking about is that we, it would be cheaper for uh, for you guys to have us in there than to think about even putting an apartment in there, in my view. I don't think you're going to, you're going to take a long time getting an apartment in that place. I don't know, the revenue from there wouldn't even balance out what we're what we're doing. No, I think you're right. I think it's storage is fine. I'm I'm right. perfectly peaceful with storage. If you in Dean, you're hinting that you may want display up there, which then opens a whole other world. Yeah. Because that that is a lot more expensive yes. to let the public go up and down and view there. It would be I'm absolutely convinced it would be cheaper to add a wing than it would be to open that second floor to the public. I have no, no idea to buy another anything about a wing next door. or how much it would cost. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is I think it's only fair to you guys that we be out front now. And, and, and I say, you know, we're right. never going to move up there. We don't need anything to, to enable us to move up there when in the back of some of our minds, there is going to come a time and it may be, you know, I'm not trying to put a timeline on it, say next year or two years from now, but the way the historical society has grown in the, in the years that it has existed, yeah. if it continues at even near that rate, right. it may not be the, you know, distant future before they need room somewhere, whether it be upstairs or an expansion of the building, I wouldn't take issue with something that they What's are happening? going to need something, and I think to be upfront with you, we need to consider that now rather than when the time comes. Okay. Well, I'm going to vote for storage is a great idea. <laughs> no public for the time being. We need to explore. May, what's going on in the garage park? Could that that would be right cheaper. now? That's full storage. That's that would storage. be cheaper to convert to display than to put uh, the public upstairs. Well, we've yeah. already put money into that, and right. the pur purpose of, of of fixing that up in the first place was that we would have a place to work with some of the stuff that's there waiting to be either face lifted or cleaned up or something uh, for display space. So much we stuff have artifacts stored in there I right understand. now. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Display. Yeah, it's full. Yeah. 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 They have more stuff to get in there because there's so much stuff. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So task at hand is storage for the second floor. Understanding we, have, we may have additional conversation. Yeah, but if it's just storage, I don't, do we really need the improvements? We're talking of five-year time frame, six-year time frame. By, by that time, these estimates are not going to. Oh, they certainly will, and construction will inevitably ruin some of the stuff that we paid for, and we'll pay for it again, mm -hmm. right? Most likely. 
Uh, maybe that's just me. So if we go, like, if we talk about each of these items, the flooring, I've heard stories about flooring not being particularly great or safe in some respects. Is that true? That is a section of floor which we are not proposing to use. Yes. That's, ca that's carpeted in there. It needs, yeah. Yeah. it needs some structural assistance. A lot. But that's in the back room, which we're not proposing okay. to go there. Okay, perfect. Um, Electrical is needed for safety. Electrical, yep. And then the construction work is around. Oh, oh that sheet rock of that yeah, bordeaux. Yeah. yeah. Ceiling at the top of the stairs and a handrail in the stairwell. Plaster patches in the stairwell. Labor materials. If it's handrail related I mean, or definitely. sheet rock, probably, yeah. yeah. Safety. Yeah. Yeah. And then in terms of the painting, I'm just not going to talk about the painting because that is a direct <laughs> relative and Evan's not going to talk about floors. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, you essentially didn't talk about floors. I heard you, I heard you not talk about it yet. Yeah. And I mean, that was, could be that or it could be less and all the paint was donated by the um, okay. So what do they need from us? What's your ask? We're asking for access to the upstairs for storage. So uh, you're not yeah. asking for cost approval? Yeah. Well, we're so asking for Yeah. And the $5,000 that you guys are proposing, is that uh, Johnson Historic Society, Inc.? Or is that $5,000 out of the town general budget back to the town? $5,000. Uh, we offered $5,000 to the entire property. Right. Is that ink is that that's ink? offering yeah. that? Is it ink or is it? It will, it will come from the historical society. Right. Yeah. But, so it doesn't matter so if the historical society gets it from ink or gets it from the next door neighbor, it will come from the historical So it won't come out of the town general budget? That was the question. If that's a no, that, yeah, it could come from... Won't come out of the town general It could come from budget. selling coins. It won't come out of the town general budget. No, no. no it okay. comes out of the historical. It comes out of the pie budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That goes into the general budget. Just for clarification, though, Mark, the pie budget money is all earned. I know. It goes in. I know. It does. I, know. I contribute to it. Um, <laughs> does it contribute pies, though, Lois? That's the real question. Um, so, is there anything here that you don't feel that we that needs to happen? What did you think? I mean, we I, talked I about. Think there are things. There's, there's nothing in addition to it. Nothing, no. To what's on there. No. But there are some things on there that need immediate. Yeah, uh, like the safety even, things, those use, are. Yeah. You know, even if it's for storage, there's, like I mentioned yeah, before, smoke detectors light and fixtures and things like fixtures. that. that yeah, exit signs, yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. all important. That's all important. I feel like I don't want to. Uh, the other issues with water infiltration and rot, those are all dealt with, right? Yeah. You know, like the rear staircase, and you guys were talking about a roof over the entryway, all that stuff is dealt well, with. Those are items that we've presented to you mm -hmm. as the owner of the building that need to be, that need to be addressed, and to my knowledge, it never has been. That is true. The last we talked about it was, I don't even know when, the last yeah. we talked about it was about finding a contractor, and actually, we have a contractor, uh, but it was about finding a contractor and getting quotes. And Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that you came back and said you didn't find contractors responding. But this is all memory. I haven't looked any of this up, but it, this is what I'm recalling. Um, does that ring a bell with you too? Yeah, it does. I uh, talked to Jill to who you're on. Yeah. And then Jill. Uh, as a matter of fact, he came on to, as an advisor for us. <clears throat> and I think what happened in the end was with a number of 
people that need contractors because of the flood, you know, and then he's rebuilding theirs, you know, in East Johnson. And yeah. so we don't have any contractor. So are we getting moisture damage right now happening, Tom? Is no. Yeah, I walked okay, around so the building um, together and it looked like there were a few major points that if aren't addressed will continue to cause um, damage will continue to get worse and that's the porch roof in the front looks like it's ice damming by the windows at the hips and then down uh, the side exit off the main display room there's like a little three steps down uh, that roof um, has a there's no flashing, and it looks like it's butted right up against the siding. The siding is wrapped around, so the water's just getting under the siding into the building. And then um, the front steps, not the main porch, but the steps to the left um, are probably should be closed off to public use, um, and just that door should just be locked permanently, if not needed. Those, that landing um, is, is not sound. Those were like the three major points that needed to be addressed that I saw without causing further damage to the, to the building. There's, there's one more item out on the, the back stairs to the second floor. The current bracing uh, goes into the wall of oh, the 45s, you're correct. Rear, the 45s, yes. yeah. and there was water infiltration uh, yes. on those 45s. Duncan attempted to spray foam it and may or may not have been successful. But Probably, but, if somebody's there, to take the 45s straight down to the ground, and that would solve correct. that issue. Correct. Yeah, that was I, advised. I that was advised by the contractor uh, who did the front porch repair, and he also made reference to the fact that the ceiling there was was, was leaking. That that part was leaking. Okay. Um, it almost feels like we should at least ask. Marcel Gordo for a quote if he's lined up to look at other things. Yeah, are there any other contractors in the room? Any other what? Contractors <laughs> right. just shaking. Somebody's head. looking around. <laughs> you available? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be turned down for the library off free time. <laughs> so we had to call dibs on for the municipal building. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the way I'm looking at this, you, there's two separate items here. One of them is the building repair, the porch roof, the back stairs, yeah, yeah. Uh, et cetera. And, and the then there are some second. items in here that are separate because we brought those other repairs to you yeah, um, previously. Yeah, Under sorry, we just got lost yeah. in like the thought of all the things we need to repair in the town. I don't know if we ever got a <laughs> dollar figure for those other ones, and I was wondering if they were taken care of, that's all, because it's a money consideration for yeah. budgeting, I guess. With the exterior, the pre was in here when, when that first was done, mm -hmm. was, that, was that budgeted for this fiscal year or no? No. no. It was not. That's it was incredibly exacerbated by the flood. Exacerbated? <laughs> Everything is. Um, okay, so how do we want to proceed? Or uh, um, I would actually propose that we talk about these things separately so, so that we have a quorum, so we have a quorum to vote because if we talk about it as a lump, that both Evan and I will likely recuse ourselves. And Duncan's and, not here. And Duncan's not here. So I think we should talk about it in terms of, we can talk floors separately, we can talk painting separately, everything not else. Not everything else, we can talk together. We can talk together. Well, I'll make a motion to approve everything except for the floors and the painting. And we can go from there. Okay. That's a sum of what? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, $5,523.57. Do you have a second? I think so. I'll second that. I'm listening to that. Okay, discussion? What's that's including the smoke detectors. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think the smoke yeah. detectors. And the emergency lights. Are right. Yeah, the electrical yeah, coal, the Bordeaux Bullard coal. Just not the painting and the floors. God, that painting is expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, yeah. 
what? Take it away. Um, okay, no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, floors. Uh, all motion we approve floor repair by Emory, Emory Floors for $2,503.50. Is there a second? Second. How many square feet is that? 20. I know it's nothing. $2,500 gets you like 12 square feet in a day. Yeah. In Mark's world. He did it. He did it. He's the loaded one. Right. I think he was being generous. <laughs> but that's a firm quote. Well, no, this is, these are all, up here you can see that it says yeah. all estimates. It's right here. All estimates. And we had to put the, you know, we put a contingency in there, but probably not anywhere near what. Yeah, it's hard to know. I don't know. read this. Mark, did you forget your glasses again no, today? No, look at how this is faded. Okay, I don't ready? even want to read it. Yep. Ready to vote? All it. those in favor? Aye. Aye. I would Aye. like to recuse myself. And you're accused, yep. I just have it. Um, painting. Does painting really need to be done for storage? Yes. I gotta ask the question. I, it stinks up there. It does. It smells it, up it's there. gross up there. I think the painting would make it nicer. Uh, you would throw that stuff out of the, the truck, aren't you? The paint? Yeah, we do a lot of You threw the paint into the truck? Yeah, no, no, no. Stinks yeah. from like smoking or. It's it's, it's an old just building. Old like, building. Yeah, like garbage just, slash it garbage. Been there was a lot of crap. Kids that were there, it was terrible. Yeah, how long it's been. There was a supply of pizza boxes up there that, yeah. Local community support. When I told them what, somebody on the border was going to come upstairs to look at it, they ended up putting like 19 bags of garbage in their car. <laughs> so you couldn't see it when you came up. Okay. Then they probably put it back up there okay. after we left. They left open food in the beds when they left. <laughs> See, we took two dump trailers full. All right, all right. I heard that. Okay, what are we doing about painting? How can we shot the fourth raft? We were. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, is this painting the whole upstairs? Is it going to cure painting. the smell problem, or is it just going to mask it for a couple months? It's painting those rooms. That we the front room. It's the not rooms. painting the bathroom or the bathroom. The, the kitchen. Oh, and we're taking. We want to take the stove out of the kitchen. Yeah, there's no saving it. No. It's old still. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just, just. Okay, what's the scoop? Painting. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the painting uh, by Linda Hill uh, up to $3,000. Yeah. What should you do a second? Second. That'll be 50 square feet, Mark. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Being, oh, uh, discussion. I just wanted to say that being, if it's a smell safety related item, I'm fine with it. This does seem like it is a sole benefit to the Johnson Historic Society, and I'd like to have longer term conversations. But I'd love to have, we'd love to have a longer term conversation. You're right, Kevin. I love it. You need to, more discussion is great. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you say aye? Yeah, yeah. I did say aye. Yes, I have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Tom, thank you. for coming thank you. walking through the Historical Society the other day. That was great. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I think I better get rid of my Johnson swag real soon before you run out regarding, of storage. Regarding the smoke detectors and the CO detectors, is that something that the town will be purchasing we can. soon? Yeah, we can. We can There's purchase. some new ones up there that we installed when we cleaned it out. Yeah, but they're they're all up. Everything up there is is expired. Mm -hmm. The ones I from installed years were ago? ten year, ten year ones, and I installed them when we cleaned it out, and I dated the back and signed them with my name. There's some, Where were well, those? There's some new ones up there that are ten year ones. I those are the, those are battery only though, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're ten year ones. There's a couple. I can talk to you, tell you stories about ten years. So, Jason, how many were there? How many? I don't remember. Me and Brian, Brian had. I think it was four, four of them. I think. Yeah. That we installed. It wasn't. It wasn't enough in every room, but there's four. Or so we. There's three hardwired smokes. There's one hardwired smoke CO combination, and then there's two uh, that do not exist now that would go in, in mm -hmm. two of the other rooms uh, that would be battery only. 
So there's adding that, that don't exist now. Adding to but one. they're already wired in, so it's not yeah. that painful. No, he's no. saying that they're adding to additional that need to be wired. Two, two rooms do not have smoke detectors. They to, and they need to be wired. Bluetooth. Uh, no. No. No, no they don't. Power. They don't need to be wired? No. Okay. The hard, no. wires, the hard wires are there. We just need to get new. To make sure the hallway and the bedrooms were, were yeah, there, yes. yes. Yeah, there was there was one ramp as we walked up the stairs we yeah. got up and then yes. there was two other rooms I think we booked. I hate it. I don't it's been a while. And one and one of these hard wires is in that back room with the with the uh, spongy floor. Spongy floor. But that one if I was in there. It wasn't like one needs to be crazy there. spongy. It just had a very yeah. unique shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Donnie, yeah. do you want to add something? It's our egress. Please, right there. We can get out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Look at a thermostat up there. Isn't there one already up there? What's that? Thermostat's not up here. Just down. There is one up there. So how do you know the heat was? There's one in the bathroom too, right? We turned it down. You turn it down they downstairs. Oh, downstairs, but they That's never. Weird. 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 Oh. It got too hot. They opened all the windows. Oh, I didn't realize it was on the other. Interesting. Okay. So, um, if you like, I feel like we should just confirm where the new smoke detectors went and where additional are needed. Tom, do you mind taking that? I'm on it. <laughs> I get to go back to the start class. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I can say if you just sign the back, I can go with it. Oh, yeah, let's go. You can turn a road trip into it. I am really lucky. <laughs> awesome. Awesome lights that are on the. Yeah. It's right across the street from Maple. Okay, let's move on right. to the next item. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks the for next item is the municipal Thanks. building Thanks RFP the presentation. process. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Track process, right? Right. Very, now we're very big. We're out. Why not? Do you guys have an account? It's awesome. On the, the town does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we do. We could get extra smokes we needed. Yep, that's uh, great. I don't know if you get smokes there. We can get smokes from there and stuff. We can get batteries too for the lights if you want me to replace them. I don't want to be a part of that at all. Yeah. <laughs> we get them for the shop. I don't even there. want to have an opinion on it. Mm -hmm. It goes down in the basement. There's a casket. Yeah, I'm sure there I is. Admit. Yeah, is it the wicker? Is, it wicker? Like, is there a wicker one down there? Yeah, there's a baby one too. Yeah. Okay, ready? You know, Mark was on this door, so sorry. Municipal oh, building right. RFP oh, process. Right. We need to keep moving. So we have a long agenda. Sorry. So for the municipal building RFP, I only just saw it today, uh, a little bit after three. My proposed process is anybody with questions, email them to Tom, copy back, and then we talk about it next Monday. Thoughts? Can we have a plan to get it out on the street Tuesday morning? So if we can like do that, huh. not not. You ever, yes, you haven't been to too many of our select board meetings. So if you. you have changes, no, we are going to do that. Yeah, we can. So if you have changes, send them to Tom and I. Yes, and we're going to have a shared word document, and we're going to update real time. Love this. And we're going to send it back out for feedback after Beautiful. everybody says that they've read it. Okay. Sounds great. I killed too many trees for this. A lot, right? I'm actually lost in the whole. Request for proposal for water damage municipal building. That we just got. got. Yep. So we share the word document with me so that I can Okay. We're using the same version. Yes, really. We're going to convert to do that. So is this it. the. We can, do it. we can do it. Wait. We can do it right in Microsoft Office. If we okay. do this, share. You can share it from Microsoft Office. Okay. Give me editor rights, and I'll just use the same version you're using. Awesome. It's kind of like sharing Duncan. <laughs> okay. Skate park RFP. Is this the third time we're sending this RFP out? Second. Oh. Um, so, Casey has prepared the RFP for the new half pipe. This project is budgeted for the year. Um, it's already along West Coast Drive. The area is along West Coast Drive. Maybe suitable for storage during an event. What does that mean? Oh, there was discussion when we did the tour with. It's digging um, a hole, not building a. Yeah, canal. it's like creating during a flood. You're like for lowering a floodplain to create storage. What are we talking about? So that it doesn't to help mitigate risk in in the village. And so this area was noted that it it's a large floodplain. Yep. However, this there's two issues. Um, 
Well, one is a good thing is that the skate park's in the back. So if any mitigation is done, the work we're doing now probably won't be part of that project anyways. So, but that was the point of saying that, that if you guys were thinking about using that as a place to lower the floodplain, this project probably will, is like on the back end of it. So it's not part of that project. The other issue is Westman Drive is like right in the middle of it. And how do you deal with that? So you'd be like isolating individuals by lowering the floodplain during a flood event. You'd be essentially they'd be able to be. So. You could build a water bridge. So I have got pretty consistent and regular feedback since the flood about materials. I know Scott, you've heard from folks too, about bringing materials into the floodplain. Understandably, because these are people's homes. Um, so there is concern about that. Materials? Bringing, so if we're bringing in concrete or bringing in fill, it's actually bringing material into the skate park as opposed to bringing material out of the skate park. And it is, it, it did significantly flood. So, um, yeah, that's funny. I can address those very quickly. Um, bringing materials in, there's, there's flap about piles of dirt over there. I can talk to you or send a memo about the math of that, the facts of it, it's not, it's it's emotional and... Understandably, okay. yeah. So I, I can send you that, and I will. Uh, we, we sat back finally and did the math. Okay, so that's not that. About structures, quote unquote, like the concrete half pipe or whatever, mm -hmm. um, those structures, per discussion with LCPC and other, I mean, there is a whole school of thought about how recreational structures, solid, non-destructive, <laughs> you know, non-destructible uh, things like the concrete ramp and stuff, they are, you know, they're good because they buffer the flow of the water. Um, they, in fact, help mitigate uh, flood damage. Um, as long as you're not, you know, filling up the whole area, which of course you're not, right? Um, we saw how, in fact, the, the black fence stopped debris and whatnot from going into the home areas. So, I... I well, we can't, I mean, we can't yeah. dismiss no, people who've lost no, their houses. No, we can't dismiss it, but um, yeah. there are... And, and in fact, um, you know, we had some good discussion at our last skate park meeting with some of the residents of Westman Road. Yeah. Uh, and like that. That's good. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's about that. Uh, but the, you know, this little half pipe. Um, I'm actually curious. Yes. Sorry. Any more thought? Well, I'm just curious. But did Scott was Scott part of any of this conversation? There's been no teams? conversation whatsoever. Okay. okay. So, Scott being the new floodplain administrator, I yes. think it would be good to loop him in on those kinds of things. Um, yes. Yeah, we can, we can follow up. Does that need a permit? No, it's not a flood. No, no uh, Susan, I sent <coughs> you guys the permit stuff, the history on that. Uh, Susan Baird, who's head of the yeah. five. Uh, looked at the drawing and the such and said, this doesn't need an amendment. A, a permit for That's, what? You, you, so you guys have that. A permit I mean, for what? Sorry. What is the question? Uh, oh, like nice floodplain, like building within the floodplain. Building within the floodplain permit? Yeah, it does not need it. But yeah. you, have, you have that email. Yeah. I apologize I for a Who is that from? Pardon me? Who is that from? Who's Susan from? Baird, head of District 5. Um, environmental district. I can I can send it to you yes, if you want. Course. Yeah, of course. That's easy. All right. So you're asking for approval to send the RFP back yeah. out yeah, again. Yeah, because we, we, we didn't get responses. No we didn't get responses first time around and then when Carl take, took a look, he suggested some changes, which we made, and then came the flood. And now we, you know. Where was that? Hmm? Where was the flood? <laughs> I know. How rude. Um, anyway, you know, it's, 
it, it, we stand a, a, a slim chance of getting it built this fall if we can get this RFP out. So long term, I think it would be great if there was conversations, Scott being floodplain administrator and LCPC, just to have a more clear picture. But I'm fine with reposting the RFP. Okay. I'm talking like long term. Oh, my one more slight than, reservation. More than, more than happy to, yeah. Is it says, you know, we want to schedule the work for September to October 2023. Yeah, well, you can probably nix that. Right. We have to just change the dates by now. We've made the other. The other changes, you know, were made earlier. So I yeah, the motion. Made. That was a motion. Yeah, you sure. Made a motion. You made a motion. <coughs> Say a motion. I had a motion. True. Huh? Yeah. 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 So, but it's not going to happen this year, right? And no. Part of the That's communication would also be with Public Works for timing to support the material moving, which we talked about before. Yeah. So it sounds like you want to do it this fall. If we could, yes. Okay. Really? Yes. And that's that's I said it. <laughs> so when are you expecting to have proposals uh, back? Well, we've got two. Part of my pawing the ground about this is that I've got two people that saw have seen the draft RFP, um, understanding that it was a draft because they're interested in bidding. One for sure. The other, I'm not sure. But I want to get it out legitimately, so it's, you know. Go ahead, Jason. What is required from the Public Works Department? What's what one? What's required from the Public Works Department? Oh, <laughs> well, probably that dirt that we you guys gave us got washed away, so we can't worry about that. It's it's not there anymore. I think. So do you want more dirt, or I don't. Uh, depends on if you have it. Um, I've got lots it, of dirt right now. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't affect the RFP though. No, no, um, but it might so, affect your project if you want us to do something, I would need to do Oh, that. okay, I, I just changed my <laughs> perspective to understand what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, right. The previous commitment that the town had made was to contribute some dirt yep. for the berm that yep. was going to go around it. And to um, maybe some topsoil or and or that pre that grass that's seeds or whatever. Hydro seeding. That stuff. Yes. Yep. Yep. That those were the two things. So that's the only thing needed from. Yes. But the question still is timing, and I think we still have the question of we need to loop Scott in because I think we do need to. I, like personally, I'm okay with putting an RFP out there, but I want to make sure that before we award the, the work, that we have floodplain administrator buy-in, considering the flood that we're still yes. experiencing. Um, and, and public works buy-in. And public works. Yes. Like, yeah, it's not just about like the stuff, it's about their time. Did the Conservation Commission get a letter? They, they, when I filled out their questionnaire. Okay, you filled it out. They, yeah, Beautiful. Know about it. Like the one person that fills it out. That's really good of you. Yeah. Um, it is appreciated. Speaking of timing, um, actually, Tom, a uh, follow up question for you is uh, Did you learn anything further about the possible Thursday inspection, therefore being able to schedule the demolition? We're waiting to schedule a meeting with... FEMA. They're talking about FEMA, a FEMA inspection on Thursday. Yeah, uh, like, possibly. I think it hasn't has it been confirmed. Not confirmed. Uh, tentative is 11.30 a.m. on Thursday. Yeah. And so here's the only pickup is for reimbursement, is we haven't done any debris removal or any work for mm -hmm. FEMA reimbursement that we need to track. So at this point, it's almost better to have not touch it, let them inspect it, close out the FEMA project, and then do any work rather than get involved with debris removal and multiple invoices and tracking a forced account time of highway crew doing debris removal or hiring a contractor and then getting invoices. It changes that whole FEMA reimbursement process where if they can just make an analysis of what's there, they'll be able to make estimates on removal, reconstruction, and then give us 100 percent of that. Is that correct? No. Correct. It used to, I, I heard 85 something. Or 75 is 
for FEMA. Most of the FEMA money. The 100% you're talking about is Cat Z stuff is 100%. Any work work is 75 plus a 12 and a half. The debris removal. 12 and a half is state, right? BRAF yeah. state. The debris removal part is, and what Tom Thomas was saying was, they put you in the best position to get that covered if you don't remove it right now. So if Thursday works, we'll have an answer on Thursday. What what FEMA's thinking about? So, that. but they, is this a meeting to, to, just to talk, or might there be an inspection on Thursday? This is an inspection of the skate park. Okay. Which Great. Dean was going to invite you to. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> when, when he we and I confirmed. spoke in the morning when it was like we hope. Okay, Thursday I feel like this week. can go offline though. So my question for all of this is: Does this? need to be resolved before we potentially do anything with a new feature. I think we can the, do the new feature. Well, hold has on, wait, 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 wait. I want to ask them the question. Sorry. The, the new feature is outside the FEMA PA program. Totally Understood, outside. but the fact that it's going into a park that is part of the assessment has no bearing? Okay. No, all, all, we have an assessment of all the damaged stuff. Casey did that. Nice job on that. FEMA has to come out and see it now, is what what their process is, just to check another box yeah. for reimbursement. So they can run together, but once Thursday is done, all FEMA is going to say is go for it. I got you. So unrelated to whatever the improvement is, because that's not a FEMA. I don't, I don't understand what that is, but it's separate from them. Okay, but what I do need to clarify, because there's really two topics here unbeknownst to everybody except me, which is, uh, yes, there's the RFP and, and the half pipe and whatnot, but B, there is the reopening of the park, which is waiting on the debris removal. And mm -hmm. that's, and, and am I understanding that that can happen after this inspection? Reconstruction of the skate park. Not reconstruction. Cleaning up of the skate park. Cleaning up bare bones, get everything out of there that was damaged can happen after Thursday. Okay. They want to see it. That's yes. It. Yeah. Okay. Phew. I thought yeah. I, I thought it was okay. like. No, what do we no want to do with RFP? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, do what room are we in? Jason and Scott need to be brought in for discussion, or can are you comfortable with the RFP going out? I think we can put the RFP out contingent on Jason and Scott part of the discussion. See you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to talk about smoke detectors anyway. Yeah, yeah we're turning that all day. Breakfast roach, and then <laughs> okay. Scott, I'll email you a copy of this. Yeah. So the follow up, instead of doing it via email or conversation, um, I'm sort of a hands-on visual person. I want to be the skate park. I want to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I could meet you tomorrow. Name and time. And if Jason's available, my schedule is open for tomorrow. We're going to turn it to well, I'm going to be right, that, could, that could all happen offline, too, yeah. right. using yeah. Beth's quote. But we like it. All right. I like the hands-on. I like borrow Beth's van for that. But. All right. So there's a motion and a second on the floor already. Yep. All right. I'm willing to amend it to uh, send out the RFP contingent on uh, public foreman and floodplain administrators check off. Is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Okay, right. I think we're clear. Okay, good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, tomorrow we'll meet. Uh, updated industrial park plans for EDA grants. We'll make it quick. So, um, Duncan and Tom have a I don't know why I have to make it quick. You've been wasting all this time. Because uh, I've been wasting all this time. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, and so EDA is going to be here on Wednesday um, walking the park with Duncan and Tom, which is exciting. Um, yeah, and the grant matching is, is actually, there's an improvement to the grant matching, which is nice. Um, I have signed the application documents and Tori has submitted those documents. Um, and I should have brought my notes from home because there's something else I want to say about it, but I can't remember. So I think if I find it, I'll share. But it seems like things are good. 
Yeah, Tuesday will know a lot more if it's exciting. Wednesday. Thursday, two. Wednesday, two. Wednesday, yeah. And then Thursday, there's a meeting, a mandatory meeting for the grant. For the, that's Northern Borders. Not, not this. this. That's not this one. That's the Northern Borders. Northern Borders, administrative. same part. Yeah. Yes, got it. Okay. Put them in the same folder, sorry. Okay. We're both in the industrial park folder, yes. Understood. Any questions on the EA grant? Yeah, my only question is, um, is this, this is a continuation of, or this is another funding source for the previously planned work um, of building out roads and water sewer infrastructure? Okay. It's, yeah, it's additional funding for water sewer, I mean, for infrastructure for industrial. If we got this, we would only be a 20% max instead of a 50. Right. Uh, okay, grants and aid extension. The state has issued a grant to aid due to the flood. Uh, although Jason will like to complete the work, it will take the pressure off, so Tom's going to file that. Perfect. Do we need Do the need pressure anything? off? You need a signature on that? I think we're actually going to, it would be great if you could sign it, just to be safe, but I think we're actually going to put that to bed tomorrow. The old one? This is the Ben Ode. The one that needs to, the one that you had to have the work done by September 30th. Is that Ben, Ben Oven? Ben Over. OBER. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you keep repeating it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'm going to have the work done Wednesday on that, technically. As far as the work, the paperwork part, I'll have done Thursday morning. Yeah, so we did get an extension for that. That's the 27000 This is why we're meeting actually tomorrow. But just, uh, we have paperwork that's due on the 30th and they extend it to 2024 instead of 2023. So they're giving us an extra year. It's just an amendment uh, from the original agreement to just give us. That's right. If, if anything goes so wrong, it's this week. Yeah, let's yeah. just sign it. Okay, so we need a motion for either me or Thomas to sign the extension. Uh, Motion oh, do you want it to include both people or just, do just I one? Do Shane's I on it. Pick? Yeah, I he's going to motion to authorize Thomas to sign this on behalf of the board. We have a motion to do a second? Yes, second. Okay, and just for Donna's sake, this is the extension to the um, grant, aid grant, aid, grant in aid for Ben Over Road. Um, okay, so no discussion. So. Shane, what? motion, you seconded. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Yes. I have it. Okay. Appointment for the Memorial County Planning Commission Transportation Advisory Committee. Can I ask, is there a deadline when this appointment can be made? I would think that if a Community Economic Development Coordinator were to be interested would, in working for the town, it would be a good fit. Um, or it's Duncan special. was suggesting Tom would be the right person for this committee. I was thinking Tom as well. I was thinking the opposite, but sure. Is this the economic one? No, this is the Transportation Advisory Committee. Duncan had asked if I was interested already. Um, I, I'm okay with whatever you choose. I have it on my calendar. They're meeting Wednesday at uh, 12. Um, we should, yeah, we should, and we should specify for how long. Okay, your motion is what? I didn't make one. You started. No, I instructed somebody else to make one. <laughs> I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Tom uh, Gallinat as the appointee to the Loyal County Planning Commission Transportation Advisory Committee for a term of two years? How's that sound? I'm ready to get more of a lifetime. Uh, you know. Two years sounds good. Okay. Um, do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. And Tom will make sure we get that added to that spreadsheet. Yes. Yeah, so that means there's a transportation committee. Now you have to stay at least two years. years. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, Green Mountain Scenic Byway re representative. This one I feel like is more suitable for an economic developer. 
All right, so we'll hold off for a little bit on that, or is there a deadline on that one? I don't, I think they're just eager to get somebody in place because they keep asking. All so right. When is our community economic development person? Next week. Specialist. Next week, Second. and I am working on a press release. I'm not really working You're on the it. Best. I'm trying to work on it. You're thinking about have, it. Like no. If we, I were you, I would have chat. Actually, can stuff. I delegate uh, chat? Chat GDP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just still in so um, she wants can you I to use chat GPT to make a... Please don't. Delegate the press release to you. I'll give you the file that I used for you, and you can use that mm -hmm. as a template. You got it. That would be excellent. Thank you. That's for... Uh, and maybe we did. Yeah. Announcement. Prior okay. Or you guys need to stop, because Donna can't hear on the recording when you're t mumbling about That's stuff. That's why we put it to the press release. Start date. Yeah. All right. On on the start date we release or previous to the start date? Uh, ahead of. And once you have it ready, I'll proofread for you, and then we can figure out where to push it. Okay. Um, we want to very specifically get it to a couple of key people, like. Um, like Jasmine, who writes the Johnson article in News and Citizen, and um, local reporters, and I pretty much pushed it to everybody on the distribution list for this meeting. I put it on the town website. Okay. I'll, um, we'll go off air with that one. Perfect. Did I say that right? Offline. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, next up is the scenic byways. So, Thomas, you had information on the scenic byways. That you wanted to share. Yeah, so this came up from the meeting, the last meeting I went to for Green Mountain Scenic Byways. We have kind of been uh, delegated areas if you pull up the packet. Um, so there's trails. Green Mountain Scenic Byways is kind of like a free publication to draw economic development to Johnson, right? It's like free advertising. And part of that is listing the key points that we want tourists to visit. Um, and the ones that are listed now, it seems like there may or may not be better ones, and the select would, should have input on that. Um, so if you, the Arts and Culture Trail, we have the Vermont Studio Center, uh, Dibden Center for the Arts, Tuesday Night Live, um, for Spears Craft and Beer, there's Moves, which um, might want to be considered, Sterling Market might want to be considered, and downtown pizza. Um, downtown pizza is not a thing anymore. Yeah. It is now Marsala salsa. So it's, if we could have three new ideas to send in, and this would probably go to that delegate could take this on too, but we might have to go over it tonight, but just know that there's things, look at this and pass it off to. I have ideas, but do we want to just email them? Yeah, I have actually a long list from Doug who was here earlier. He sent me a list of all kinds of things to consider. Done. Yeah, the um, the covered bridges and historic sites trails I think needs like a, a lot of attention. Which I think is. Mark would really like to know that Waterman Bridge is listed as a covered bridge. Yeah, and exactly. John, that's kind of a personal. <laughs> I have photos of tour groups at Scribner Bridge from Pennsylvania over the weekend. Multiple tour groups. They come through with a van with people on it and cars with little flags that says Covered Bridge Tour. Do you <laughs> sit at Scribner Bridge and take photos no, of people driving through your creek? No, people send, people send them to me. He is on the road a lot. He's hanging out <laughs> under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> like the okay. Uh, cool. So you'll get feedback, it sounds like, from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do economic person to handle that? Yeah, that would be seems like it's kind of in their belly Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, I mean, abandoned mobile home. The town's interest in an abandoned mobile home preceding that has been entered into the record in the event that mobile home sells, the town will be reimbursed with infant taxes. Do we have to do anything with this, Tom? Um, no. Uh, fortunately, the owner, the property owner, um, who entered the proceeding did list the amount of delinquent taxes and village water and sewer in the proceeding. So 
that should be the first lien to be considered um, when the mobile home is sold. But if, some, if there's a hiccup, I just want to make you aware, if there's a hiccup, there's a chance that this might come back up and this is what this is about. Um, it, it should be smooth, but we never know. Correct. I know. Does yeah. the mobile yeah. home have any value in your estimate? Uh, uh, Grandland has it at ninety-one hundred dollars. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, joint water project. So, this is probably the first we've, we've talked about it. We have a long day tomorrow. <laughs> um, this kind of came up very quickly, but um, there's the meter at Legion Field that freezes, um, that we, the town uses for the ice rink. That meter has special procedures to make sure it doesn't freeze each time. And so the village has suggested um, a joint project. I'm not sure if it's the town suggested or the village suggested. I receive a suggestion um, to remove the meter altogether and just have a frost-free hydrant with a lock on it. Um, so that way you don't have to go through these special procedures to drain the meter each time so it doesn't freeze. Um, it's used for the ice rink, which I believe now the usage for the ice rink is unmetered by the, by the nature of how they have to bypass that, however that works. And then um, the usage for uh, Tuesday Night Live, the total is $72 a year is what we pay, and the village is asking uh, for a, just a flat stop, there's no meter, just a flat $100 a year from the town for that usage for the ice rink Tuesday Night Live. And then they're asking for a joint project where the town does the digging um, and pays for the short section of ABS pipe, the two male connectors, and then the village will do the removal and installation. So the town would provide their labor to dig for them, and the village would provide their labor to connect and remove and then the town would backfill. Um, I haven't talked about this with Jason yet. I see. <laughs> He's heavily supportive. <laughs> sure. I would like to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, what makes you think it's my idea? Yeah, I don't think it's yours. I just would like no. to know, I think we should put that uh, dry hydrant where it benefits the pizza oven and the rink right I now, but why we're gonna do this project, we might as well make it so it's very gonna move it. For the rink, it's fine where it is. I agree with you. I think that might get into wastewater issues, and then it might slow it down. And then, and I don't want to slow it down because I, I, I work really hard on the ice rink every year. You know, I put a lot, a lot of time into it, and I do it sometimes with, sometimes without permission to use the fire hydrant. And I don't think it's a good idea. Nobody really thinks it's a good idea, but I do it because it's usually 12 at night. Nobody's out, um, and they know I do it. You know, it's, it's all good. Um, so yeah, let's not slow it down. Let's just, the, the meter's already in the ground. It's never been used. I saw it get put in, I looked across the street. I asked them if they were putting a frost street meter in when the hole was open. And they said no. I said, well, I want to do an ice rink. You know? Now you're talking about the one that's right by the Right by the, fire, by the fire hydrant, yeah. Yeah. So that one, that'll work great, because there's also outlets right there, so we can plug a, uh, a hose in to thaw a hose out. You know, we've got um, heated hoses. You know? That's where you, where you would like it. That's. I just would like it there because it's not, I don't want to get anybody else involved, I want it to happen. I'm just curious. Jason, what are your, so what are your concerns? Well, I have to dig safe it anyway. If we're doing a dig in a town, it's going to dig safe it. Right. So, if you want it closer, there's no one else that's going to be it's a problem. It's a good here. spot for us because it's, it's, it's 25 feet away from the rink and that way it's not, you know, it's far enough away for snow removal up the rink, we don't bury it. Um, it's close to the road, so it's kind of a nice spot to park stuff. Um, and, yeah, and the, and the pizza oven, I'm on that committee, we don't need water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being that you're begging for work, Jason, I think we put one on each side of the ice <laughs> rink. Now we're begging, but I hate doing work six times. If we do it right the first time, <laughs> yeah, there was right right like, yeah, I, I just want to um, sort of clarify the the elephant in the room for the vendors of Tuesday Night Live having a water supply. There's a gray water issue because nobody knows what's being washed. Right. And we looked at this a while back. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, don't. So we're, you were doing it for the ice rink. We were doing it for the ice rink. what we're doing it for. And the ice rink gets a lot of action, and I need help. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting burned out on it, so I need help from other volunteers. If we have a frost-free hydrant with just a, a keypad or a lock on it or something, 
So, so yeah. we could have certain different people that are volunteers access it do it as well because you know I went out and bought a lot of my own equipment to run the fire hydrant. You know, I'm not just going to loan, loan that out to another friend to take on that liability that I'm not even sure I should have. Um, yeah, you shouldn't. So I think we should just ask that it not be a key lock so that okay. we don't have to track keys down. It's just nightmarish. Or just um, do a cat key. So anyway, okay. Yeah. What do you think about doing the work? Sounds like we're doing the work. You're happy? I mean, you want to do more work, so. I just like doing it right the first time. Um. Yeah. I wasn't there the first time, Jason. No, no, I'm not, nothing, nothing to do with this. That's not what I'm saying. I just didn't know if it benefit you closer to no, the I down. I, I appreciate that. No, it's is there something closer. else that you're concerned with that isn't doing it the right way, other than location? No, no, no. I'm not saying the right way is where it is. I'm just, if we put it in, and then they decided they want it closer, it would be nice to just done it. Okay. okay, cool. So, board, what do we think? Super sweet. Um, yeah, yeah that's 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 I would ask Brian, um, is it worth, I have a lot of cross street lights and stuff in my farm. Yeah. I have to run a heat take down, just out of principle. Yeah. Sometimes I plug it Yeah, there's an outlet right there. We might as well bury one on it. I would, I would wrap it with heat tape while it's down there. Yeah. Just in yeah. case some Yahoo needs a crack or yeah. something, yeah. you can thaw it out. I, I, have I agree, I have them at my barn too. Yeah. So can we yeah. ask the electric, if the okay. village, if they'll take that on, adding that heat tape? Yeah. Is it okay if I do that? Yeah. Can I have one more thing real quick about the electric while we're on it? Um, that field is in some places like nine inches out of level, so it takes a lot of mass to get the water going. So the initial floods should be used with the fire hydrant, and that's fine, but that, that's going to maybe two or three floods a year as opposed to you know five days a week for two months, um, which I think is reasonable. But at some point, it would be awesome if we could level that field just a little bit. Either that's bringing in fill. I, I took a laser to it, so I know where it is. And it just takes so much time to get that ice to build up. But we would save a lot of water and a lot of volunteer time. And liners. So the liners go because we have we might have four inches of ice. And then in the middle of the rink, you know, it's like a piece of plywood, but expanded is 48 by 96. Right here, there's still bare plastic. And then it snows, and then you shovel it, and you ruin your you know, nine hundred dollar liner for sure you get it. So if it's level we would save money in the long run. But I know that's not gonna happen this fall, that's a big ask. I don't know what that looks like. Also grass would have to be. That's something that we need that. you brought up last year. Yeah. I've been bringing it up for a long time. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's something to, it's something to ponder. Yeah. You know be, what are the dimensions of the rate? Sixty uh, by forty eight by ninety six. Forty eight by ninety six. Fifty two by one form. But it's like nine or ten inches, right? That on one side. Yeah. It's about seven inches, yeah. and it's kind of a hump. So I don't know if you could, if you can plow it over. You know, I don't. I'm not. Really, initial that. talk was to do something there. Then some people were concerned because it was a ball field, and if people oh, got trip hazard when they were backing up, so we were going to race I mean, the you're whole tripping thing. if it's a dip. So I'm just well, saying what they. I'm, I'm just. It's a field. You're just asking. And nobody about. uses it for ball anymore. Also. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Let's, Sorry, let's Thank you. Thank you. We only got. Yeah. Interlocal agreement for assessor. Oh. This is Darn it. Duncan was supposed to be here, but thankfully Ron's still here. Okay. Because I have already forgotten everything we talked about, and it was a lot. Um. So for the assessor agreement, we talked about a lot on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, this all came up because Justin has been talking to Berkshire, Berkshire and Berkshire uh, was interested in contracting with him and that led to, if we hired them on, it would mean it, it's enough hours to bump up to benefits. Um, I also am like cognizant that some of what we talk about could be contract related and maybe isn't appropriate for open session, but I'll just try to skirt around some of that. Um, probably what I already said could <laughs> into that category. Um, but we basically talked about bringing another town in feels like it complicates the situation that we're in in many different respects, both with 
um, what we've done with St. George and the way that the offer letter was written um, and the way that we're contracted with Justin right now. We ultimately should consider Justin a Johnson Town employee where we work basically contract out with other towns. We're not quite um, contracted in this way. Right now we have the interlocal agreement. Um, and also we have an offer letter from Johnson to Justin um, with terms and he falls into all of our pay and all of that and then the other towns pay us. Um, but we should probably rethink going into the next fiscal year how we have all of this set up and presented in terms of the way we contract both with the assessor agreements and also with the way we have our interlocal agreements set up so that we are positioning ourselves to allow for enough hours that would make anyone in this job um, eligible for benefits but also in a way that we are contracting with other towns so that we are getting paid those liabilities and those other um, fees that the towns pay for the assessor services that would not put Johnson in, at a disadvantage liability-wise. Uh, ultimately, what I think we kind of landed at is um, we're not quite ready for Berkshire in terms of our um, interlocal agreement right now, but if Justin wants to pursue that separately, by all means. Um, and if they're interested in joining for the next fiscal year, we should probably just think about what that means. And also, um, in terms of having Justin be a Johnson employee, we should also be thinking about the interlocal agreement so that um, we collect benefit, liability, all of those types of things up front as part of that interlocal agreement, rather than collecting on the back side, including, ben including like time off, paid time off, and that kind of thing. We just want to collect all of those assets up front so that the, we don't hold the liability over time. I just thought of one other thing I forgot, and then it locked my head. What was it? Just, I figured. You're doing the right thing by just calculating the true cost to Johnson by having the employee carrier and then making sure that's spread out in a way that it, that protects the town but also allows other towns access reasonably. Yeah, the, the initial agreement was uh, hard cost. You know, it was like, what are we going to pay? What's the hourly rate? And rate out, you know, just to. And, and we all knew at the time we were talking about that, that it was a, a pilot project, a work, work in progress. So the meeting that we had, and probably a couple more on these details, would be the true up and make sure that that formula works. Yeah. The other piece was the actual Johnson host and whether or not uh, LCPC, who had been a potential host in the very beginning, uh, is an option as we get more towns. So initially it was five towns, that's a, it's serving multiple towns, logical LCPC role. We, we paired that down to two towns and that's what we decided to do with Johnson High Park. So those are kind of the two things. It's really a, a growing phase of looking at documents, making sure costs are covered, and a review of the interlocal agreement. And the third piece, I think, was the, uh, was the overall management of Johnson uh, and keeping it or looking at LCPC again. Yep. So I think that the, the ask tonight, it was mostly informational, but if there's any concern about us continuing to dive into this and proposing updates to the interlocal, like if you're concerned about it in any way, we, we can stop discussions, but if you're supportive of us continuing, we should. Um, there was one other aspect, and the other aspect we talked about too that I don't want to forget, I remember, was... Um, we need to figure out, and we're working on this, but we need to figure out what that balance is because we know that two Johnson Hyde Park towns, if we had four towns at this size, financially it makes sense, and it um, is one of those things that 
a single person can handle easily. But when you start talking about multiple smaller towns with fewer hours, it becomes less feasible really quickly. So there needs to be some sort of a formula to determine what that allowance is. And we'll have to work with Justin on and that. that. Yeah, and that's tentatively set for Thursday. Perfect. Yeah, yeah right. Don, uh, Duncan and Ron are going to meet with Justin on Thursday to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, my only real, you know, it, is there kind of an upper limit to the number of towns that we're going to consider adding to this thing? Because it does kind of seem like, okay, we've got two, and now we've got three, and now we've got maybe a fourth, and is there going to be a fifth and a sixth <coughs> one day that, you know, just kind of getting overly complicated in my head. I, I would be more supportive of something like you had said where we have Justin be a Johnson employee and have figure out some kind of rate schedule to assess to other towns and have them compensate for benefits and et cetera. Um, but yeah, the, the interlocal agreement I think is it has the potential of getting too cumbersome very quickly. So just for clarity's sake, um, it was always the intention to have more than two towns. Uh, I think the complexity comes with the size of those towns. So well, originally, you know, having eight small towns isn't really a feasible. Yeah, originally, I think we were looking at three towns in Malone County, a town we in Addison County. Addison County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the Addison County town backed out, and the other Malone County town backed out. Mm -hmm. And that's, like Braun said, because he was representing Hyde Park on the side of this. The original discussion was LCBC holds the employee, bills on an hourly rate. And Personal, with LCPC, the proposal was that it would be an additional 20%? Right, because they have to, you know, their overhead. Personally, if we get into more towns and it gets more complex, only because you're asking opinions, I would rather see the options, but I think LCPC is going to be more logistically smart. If we could charge out at an hourly rate of an assessor, then maybe it'd pay for the taxpayers, but it seems like too much risk. So um, there is a follow-up to LCPC to make sure they're still interested, too. The big question that I have is, has Justin, and you might know this wrong, because you represent my part, expressed any interest in getting his appraiser's license. He's, the state of Vermont, not not a private type market, commercial one, no. He's got the VPA 1234 is what the state of Vermont offers. He's at level one. We don't necessarily, as, as Hyde Park, want him to go to three and four. That's a whole different, they can do re Town-wide reappraisal. Well, yeah. So you're picking up on my big question, real quick. Hyde Park has no interest in him doing a reappraisal. No, we 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 were from the beginning comfortable with a one and two kind of doing the maintenance work, which is what you're talking about. Right. And what's do you know what Hyde Park CLA is at right now? No, we got our letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys are we're bad on COD and CLA. So it, are you are you doing a statistical or actual no, trying just, to contract we're just out? No, well, wait until we can find a reappraisal. Firm to do the so you guys might not need it till 2028 anyways, and maybe we're thinking of 27, maybe if we're lucky. Yeah. You can stretch it out that long, man. Why do we even care? They just switched to three to five. Is that right? Um, well, the, the historically we're on ten. This is going to be like a, fine. probably a seven yeah. or eight. So um, we're just going to wait to see if you get fined. I guess make that decision. <laughs> no, we don't. I guess my my question my question was. If Justin had expressed interest in that, um, he, Hyde Park he, doesn't no, have any interest in him doing it, which is fine. No, but, but he did express interest might. in doing the grandest maintenance work for multiple towns and having a job with benefits. And that's what we initially set up the interlocal with because but one he, town on their own couldn't do that. But he didn't express interest in doing reappraisals. Well, he's just starting no. off. Like, he's just figuring out that he likes it at this well, point. Well, I'm talking. I guess long. I know you're thinking ahead. You but may. I, don't know I mean, ideally, you know, this this interlocal with a benefit-paying multi-part-time position with multiple towns breeds another 
youngster, so to speak, that wants to learn and get educated and keep on going. Because reappraisal firms are hurting in Vermont. Well, yeah. So Full reappraisal firms are hurting. Real, real wide uh, yeah. look. If there was expression in Justin wanting to get reappraisal certified, whatever that is, level three or level yeah. four, um, a previous select board in Johnson had tried to tried this concept of a rolling reappraisal yeah. where you appraise 25 percent of your town yeah. and then your grain list is redone every four oh, years, and I love that, yeah. but it would be considerably cheaper for Hyde Park and Johnson to maybe go to a six-year model, um, but only do what 17 percent of our town a year or something like that. I, I mean reappraisals. And you guys are going to be staring down a quarter million dollar bullet pretty soon. Um, really and we're not far behind you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys being high fire. No, it's going to force some creativity. I, 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 you know, not to predetermine anything, but the only thing the select board did in Hyde Park was say, yes, we know our numbers are bad. We will present the plan within 180 days. That's the second part is the actual plan where we're going to get into that question. Yeah. I guess what I'm getting at is from where I sit as a single select board member, it is cheaper for us to employ a full-time person that can do it, hire them out for 50% of their time to another town that needs that service anyways. This is really clever. Yeah. I mean, this is, right. this is, we just spent 154,000 in a tiny town, right? Like, in Peachum. So for you, so like for you to have an employee do 20% or 25% of the town a year, like this is like super, this is Stop actually- Stop choking my ego, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but this is actually really exciting because if it's, it's a condition of, if that's a condition of his employment, his, it's not right now. No, it's not. But like, imagine if he gets that class, right? His wages don't have to go up exorbitantly to consultant rate. So, you're, so you're saving big time there. And he's he as an employee, it's hard to find somewhere to work. I guess he he could probably get a job anywhere at this rate. Wow, well, he, yeah, he would get a decent rate of pay. He would get a decent rate of pay and full benefits, and it would still save the taxpayers of both towns. Yes, right. or even all four, to be honest. If he's doing it well, I, yeah. I don't know it's if I'd want to. Issue too. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'd want to be doing reappraisals for other towns. There's nothing saying the interlocal can have two employees too. I mean, we we had talked about Justin getting full. But we do have two employees. We do now. Yeah. One's going to fade away, but yeah. you have two permanent people that do something like what you're talking about. Because there's always going to be some maintenance and there's going to be some potential reappraisal. Until the state, you know, changes yeah. their The hardest site part of every reappraisal is re is recalculating your score, your, your rubric, right? So that's like where the most money comes in with your with your consultants. But if he's doing that on a daily basis and constantly figuring this out as part of his job, like that's a huge savings on the first end of that consultant fee is to set up those scores, those camera values, if you will. Yeah, there's, there's certain acceptable methods that PVR will accept. So well, that would be explored in this plan that we're thinking about. Where maybe I wasted a lot of time down a deep rabbit hole. Do you understand where my thoughts are? You're asking for them. Yeah, cost you can get it. Huh? Cost saving. If there's any way. Not so even. No, no, no. He's thinking, he just wants to make sure that we have some sort of reappraisal plan in place so that we can go through regular cycle year over year, stable budget. Yeah. So we're not so we're not up our tax rate isn't bumping up it and could, down a little it bit. It could be every eight. Well that, you know, if it was every eight and your well, CLA hit that number and you already said here's our six, plan. My understanding with the six is that there's an elevated level of work on that sixteen percent every year. Reappraisal firm still has to do the final true up and bless the new reappraisal numbers in year seven or end of year six. So there is a much smaller role for somebody to come in and finish that. But maybe the town interlocal employee is able to do the 16% and then the reappraisal firm comes in at level three, four to finish it and publish it. So at much reduced cost. At 150, it might be 30,000 or something. I don't think there's an action anyway, item. That's part of the plan discussion that's on the today. Yeah, yeah. So our immediate is about like the current interlocal that we have. That's what we need to focus on first. I hear you though. We if there's no long term out. future for the town, I'd rather go with LCPC. Yeah, I single board. Okay. Number. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. I'm so we'll, we'll keep. We'll thanks, keep Ron. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. Um, thanks, Ron.
So you're even here representing Oops, Hyde Park. I already, Bill I them for the travel. <laughs> uh, okay. ARPA transfer update. Is, Ro is Rosemary? Rosemary is still here. Ask her who she wants to talk about. We were both at the same meeting. Hey, Rosemary, do you want to talk about the ARPA transfer update? Her baby. Baby. I don't see her coming off of you. If you do want to talk about Is it, Rosemary, you can come off of you. No, that's not that. So it's, it's you, Tom. Um, so Rosemary and I met with uh, VLCT, and the ARPA money is going to be transferred from the ARPA fund into the general fund and will really serve as two purposes. Uh, one will be a bridge to gap these FEMA reimbursements. So we're gonna be, we have to shell out, in many cases, at least five of those projects, we have to shell out 100% of the costs before we get FEMA reimbursement. This, these ARPA funds will be used to help bridge those costs so we won't go over budget and we won't, and we hopefully won't have to have a tax anticipation note. And then also at the end of the year, it's going to create this surplus to go into a fund. And VLCT um, suggested some language to make it so that the first, the next, say we want to use all 650,000 into this fund, but we only have 300,000 left because the flood, that bridge took it. Then you have right language for the town meeting article that the, that the first, all excess funds up to 650 roll over into this fund first. So that way the ARPA funds get used for the purpose they intended, but it got us through this really tough time, and that's really exciting too. You know, so it's, it's really nice that we have this option where we likely won't go over budget because of ARPA, and we'll still have our ARPA projects completed as well. Will we be able to do that the following fiscal year? Um, yeah, when's, I thought it was 20, January 24. So by moving this money into the general fund, and calling it a, a standard loss, right. it actually satisfies ARPA. So the right. minute Rosemary okay, so moves that money, okay. yep, we're done. I'll do the reporting in March and say we're done. We've not only have we designated it, we've we've also expended it, and we're done with ARPA. ARPA has some new rules that came out with the last final rule that if projects fall through between that 24 and 26, now towns are on the hook to re to pay back the government. So instead of, it's in our best interest to not pay the CUD, but to transfer all the money to the general fund and then pay the CUD through our general fund. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. So it's like really great meeting. It was very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you have an odd level of what makes you excited, but I'm very happy you are seeing. Come out the last, the last Oh, by the way, if anything falls through in any of that, so time, we just need yeah. to bring it in for general expenses. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. We got expenses. Yeah, we got to do. Okay. Mark salary. Vermont Council on Rural, rural Development. <laughs> there was me. I make myself a note. Uh, it's a letter. Yeah, the letter I passed around. Did I pass it both ways? It was in our packet as well. I passed it this way. I did not pass it. It was in our packet. Oh, it was in the packet it was too. In the packet, okay. Packet, yeah. Um, so that was very so kind of them for returning yeah. our. Can we send them a thank you card? There is a, bo a box of thank you cards somewhere in the office. At my can computer. we send? Can we send Carl a thank you card? Yeah. Is Carl ever going to come back and see us? Uh, he said he's coming back Thursday. I might be skeptical. No, I mean, you know, I mean, back to one of these meetings with CS, but probably not. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I doubt that. Meetings? Probably not. We should, okay. But I'll, I'll ask him. If you can just keep us updated on, like, how progress is going and when we should have a final, like, setting a date, yes. that would be great. Yeah. Just keep us updated. Absolutely. Uh, cool. Okay. We will send Carl something, but let's wait till he leaves. A Carl card. We don't want to scare him away. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that was very. That was very kind of the uh, Vermont Council of Rural Development. It's going to make a big difference in our budget. Yep, it is. Form based code fee for variance appeals. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. This is where you're suggesting that we ratify what the form based code says because it's a suggested amount. Correct. And we didn't actually have a motion. 
I move to set the fee for a form-based code variance and appeal at two hundred and fifty dollars. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I, I, I thought you could move right past me. Is there anything else that we have for today? One thing I'd like to add. Oh, Jesus. I know. <laughs> well, uh, I figured I'd just give an update because I thought when I opened this up and saw uh, that the grading for Waterville is all done. Mark, he was 19 and a half hours. Beautiful. Um, so, and we, we build out the graders and Mark's later. Yeah. Yep, beautiful. Yeah. Is that more often? Awesome. Um, Not quite, but a lot of it. Takes 13 miles of it. And you're, you're so super comfortable yeah. with all of it. Huh? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, because their highway certificate's about 14 and a half yeah. or something. Theirs is weird. That's not a map. Lastly, not for That's discussion, year. but it was in your packet. I thought Ron was going to talk about it. Um, he has another flood report, number four. Was that emailed to us? Yes. It was. No. It, what did you get an email? I okay. Yeah. I got it and I forwarded it. So I can re Sweet. we can look at it on our own time. And then, Basically, I just forward everything that's done. Well, almost everything. I'll tell everybody. Did you get the damage inventory? If there's inventory an attachment, there? it's getting forward. Um, was the damage inventory in that email? I don't remember. That's like the coolest seen. thing I've seen so far. It has like all everything. Oh, I didn't see a spreadsheet. Which Wonderful. Is, it's the first time I've seen every project. I do like side spreadsheets. By side. Are we ready, Are ready to adjourn? Meeting adjourned at 9.06. You can recycle that stuff, all right. How come?